Hey everybody, welcome to the POS Podcast. Um, tonight, uh, Hero, Jax, and Saber are with us. Um, I didn't hear back from Tom, so I don't know if he'll be joining. Uh, but tonight, later, um, Jim will be joining. Uh, Jim Gisrael. Because he'll be talking to us about the Oscars and how that went last night. Um, I heard it didn't go well. Right? <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Mm. Um... Uh, apparently the Oscars have been getting a lot less viewers, like, the past few years, but, and... There's people know their bullshit. Yeah, well, especially this year, because, you know, um, nobody really went to theaters last year, so nobody didn't really care. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, because the, the viewership, um, for the Oscars was, like, around, like, 25 million for the past, like, three years. It went down to like nine point eight million for last night's yeah. show, mm. which is mm. a huge drop off. Yeah, mm, sucks. That's bro. Mm. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, with, yeah. With with how they kind of disrespect animation, I really don't care. But yeah, no. um, yeah. <laughs> I'm here to tell you right now, we don't, we don't care. care. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> Except for him. But it's, uh, I forget his name, but uh, he's on ESPN. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that uh, sportscaster. Um, yeah, I um, but, uh, <laughs> I love it. How have you guys been the past couple weeks? Better, mentally better. <laughs> so that's good. I'm better as well. I feel like I'm finally catching my breath on some things, and that it's a good feeling. So mm. I'm doing better. Thank you for asking, Paleo. Yes. I'm fine. I, I just got a headache right now, so I'm like kind of doing worse. You know? <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, yeah. Who me? Yes, you oh. the last one. Um, yeah. fine. Uh, I was I was very tired before um uh, doing the podcast because um I I keep having sleep trouble and I woke up like really early. So I was like, well, I better not go to sleep. Um, oh, I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> so valid. Um, so I, I took like a short nap before the podcast so I could have some energy. Um, you should try. Um, there's this powder that I take before bed. It's been helping me the last couple of nights. It's called Calm. And what uh, it is, it's just like a okay. just magnesium supplement. And all you do is you just like put like two scoop, uh, two teaspoons of it in like warm water. It like, it, it's been working pretty well. It helped me stay asleep. Cause I have the same thing with that. So that could be uh, something to try out. I'm not gonna lie. That sounds like a drug. It just takes- It's not a drug, it's just magnesium. <laughs> Your body makes magnesium. You get it from right, right. Yeah, it's just magnesium. Yeah. Wait, what you Somebody walked up to you and you're like, it's all right, buddy. You just need to take some calm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I, took my, I took my headphone off and I said, come. And I was like, yeah, excuse? that works too. <laughs> Leaving the body, it helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. I've also been uh been streaming a lot. Uh, oh, Tom's I, I, here. I've been doing some uh streaming on on Twitch. Oh yeah. Um, Tom. Hello. Yo, what's up? How is life? It's grand. How's life for you? It's pretty grand. It's pretty grand. Thick, sick, awesome. Actually, no, it's not. Actually, today is terrible. I actually um, lied completely. <laughs> that's that's okay. That's like the uh, American thing to do. You can be like homeless on the street, like dying, haven't eaten in three days. Someone will come by. How you doing? I'm good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't complain. Yeah. It's like, can you not? <laughs> it's like, I can. I really try, I guess, complain. Yeah. It's like, well, if you really want to know, open up giant tome of compliance. <laughs> Oh, what are we doing? What are we talking about? What's going on? Paleo's hey, doing the rundown of yeah. the week. Paleo, hey, I don't know if you're wearing a robe or a jacket right now. Oh, no, you it's look my like, jacket. You look, you look like Hugh Hefner over there. <laughs> I don't know if someone already said that, but uh, yeah. But uh, now we know it's true. <laughs> yeah. Maybe no one said it, but we were all thinking it. <laughs> what was that noise? Oh, that noise. Uh, also, uh, Jax, do you have headphones on? Because I, I hear like echo. Oh, hold on. Let me get some headphones. Sorry. Blech. 
How long have you been doing this podcast? Doesn't he know the sitch by now? Jesus <laughs> Christ. The sitch? What are you? <laughs> uh, Kim Possible fan. And I... Are you saying that you love Kim Possible a lot? I would say I love Kim Possible the normal amount. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the second channel. <laughs> Wonderful. What are you giggling about, you giggler? <laughs> wow. Yeah. What are So yeah, to Tom, what have you been up to? Um nothing. I've had like a really dumb last like two, four weeks, however long it's been since I've last been on this podcast. Mm -hmm. Um I decided uh, to start taking a new medication, right? I'm on Adderall now. I hate mm -hmm. it. It's the worst. Um, uh, but like <laughs> the first two days, like they were like, oh, you need to start taking Adderall because you're like broken. I'm like, oh, I didn't even need to say, I tell me that, but okay. <laughs> and they were like, all right, so um, you're going to prescribe you Adderall, but you can't have a lot of caffeine with Adderall, me in the middle of like my fourth energy drink of the day. <laughs> what? So mm -hmm. I started, I started taking Adderall and I had to like cold turkey caffeine, like at the same time. And I was like having two cups of coffee and three energy drinks a day, you know? Mm -hmm. So from that to nothing, like the first two days on Adderall, I was already like freaking out about the medication, but I'm also having caffeine withdrawal. So I'm like puking like all day. And I'm just like, oh. is this the medication or is this caffeine withdrawal? I don't know. Um, cause like, I already have like a sketchy thing with meds in general, like even just like normal things. Like, I don't know if I want to take ibuprofen. That's just fuck with my body. But, um, <laughs> I like open up the label and it's like the first thing's like warning instant death can occur. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Fine. thank you. Yeah, finally. Thank you label. Yeah. It's like, if at least you're going to get it over with it instantly, I guess, you know, <clears throat> like, so <laughs> you're just falling. You're like, oh, oh, is this the instant death? Yeah, well, yeah. it's not instant. So slow death <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't i didn't notice the asterisk next to instant and it's just like instant may take two to four business days yeah yeah <laughs> like, death. <laughs> so yeah that was fun uh cool i love it take your meds kids do you feel um that's what bill gates would want me to tell you i think yeah get, get those robots in your bloodstream yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, all of you guys have your COVID shit, right? Your vax. You got, you got yeah, vaxed yeah. up. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I get my second shot on Thursday. Yeah, everybody I know is all anti-vax. So they're all mm. just like, fuck that shit. I was just over Don't at my friend's house that. before I came over here. And they were like, yeah, my mom's telling me about trying to get my vaccine. And it's like, Ugh, I'm not letting that shit fuck with my body. And it's like. Usually it's the okay. other way around. <laughs> Where, like, the parents yeah. are anti-vax. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, well, these guys are, like, new HIP kind of dudes, so, you know. Mm. All you need is weed. That's that's all you need to, to fight coronavirus. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. No offense. No offense. Live your life. No offense. <laughs> no <full> offense. <laughs> I'm full offense I, am. I can't. I know these people personally. <laughs> sorry, not even slightly sorry. <laughs> You're allowed to be as... <laughs> aggro as you want and then of course the parents are saying the same thing so i'm just like okay I'm trying to talk my sister out of getting it and it's just like what a strange world i live in that's been my week it's awful week <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. by the way thanks tom for sending over these games yeah thanks paleo for sending me cash yeah, yeah tom sold me some uh N64, NES, and one 3DS game. <laughs> and one 3DS game. Yeah. yeah. That was so like so half of my 3DS collection right there. Literally <laughs> one 3DS game. Dude, as soon as I found out you could put custom firmware on the 3DS, I'm like, ah, it's home. Just like the DS and the GBA before it. Never oh. have to buy any carts. Yeah, fuck you, Nintendo. I don't give a shit. <laughs> there was that one um uh, DS thing, uh... I, I think it was like an it wasn't like an action replay it was like something else where it it it, it you could store like videos and stuff on it um, oh the real player yeah no, yeah not real or player. something i like think it was that. or was it called real player I, it was something player yeah 
I can't remember what it was called. Um, but yeah, you could uh, download um, videos from your computer and play it on the DS. Mm. Yeah, they like they like crack that or something. They make it play games as well, right? Yeah, something like that. Fuck, it wasn't real player. Oh, it was something. Whatever, it doesn't matter. DS was the shit. Playing Quake in school, wireless multiplayer, on hacked DSs when you're supposed to be in German class. That was my life. German. Those yeah, gross. I failed Spanish, so I took German, and the the old guy who taught German was this really old guy who was really nice in retrospect, but at the time everybody hated him, and it was re we were really mean to him. And I think back now, I'm just like, if I go to hell, that's probably the reason for making some old German man's life absolutely miserable. <laughs> and all he wanted to do was to teach us his his native language, but he was really not a good cool, teacher. Dude. He like yeah. he, he came over to America in like the late 1940s. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it was weird, you know. Like he had a very yeah. strange like choice of facial hair, but you know, <laughs> we didn't we didn't uh, we didn't think too much of it. He, he always yeah. he always got angry at the art teacher, and <laughs> yeah, and he, and, he, and he took over the Austrian and Czechoslovakian language classes. <laughs> but the principal's like, let him keep it. It was it. the weirdest thing was like when some of the kids came in, they had to like put on these like armbands. I don't know if they're like his favorites or something. It was really <laughs> okay. I, I, I think we get the joke now. <laughs> <laughs> My teacher, what's Hitler? Right, there we go. <laughs> Did you get it? Have you taken any history ever in your life? <laughs> Speaking of Hitler, I'm studying this. It's, uh, oh God. it's a World War II animation. No, it's good. It is good. I love this shit. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't say that on the internet. Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I it blows my mind that Hitler is like Disney. We can do it better. We'll we'll just tear this country apart and make our own studio in the Balkans or something. I don't know. Or the Sudet <laughs> land. Yeah, it's like sounds like sounds like a thing Hitler would do. Sure, sure. Wipe out people and also make Disney films. You know, that's what he's about. <laughs> yeah, that's just just a Tuesday for our old boy Adolf over there. Dude, I was um listen to this audiobook and apparently Hitler got upset one time so he got so pissed off that he apparently chewed carpet in his room like he fell on all fours and was like ah, and started chewing on the carpet and they're like what the fuck's he doing like he's a nut okay Hitler if Hitler was born you know and like the, if Hitler was our age right now in our time he'd be a lol cow for sure he never would have rose to power <laughs> <laughs> that was officially derailed the podcast. Yeah. Hey, Jim. Hey, what's up? Mm, sorry. Yeah. Hey, Jim. Jim's here. Sorry. Yeah, Jim. Took a minute. We're floundering. Was... It's fine. Oh, okay, good. I came to rescue the show. I'm sort of the. Quickly, Tom, uh, let's talk about Hitler to take up time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was that what was going on? Yeah, yeah. Jim's oh. coming storming the beaches of Normandy to uh, save us. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, the PO's podcast has changed, man. That's yeah, cool. you know, um, that alt right pipeline is just, you know, sinks its teeth into you before you know it. Whoa. Yeah. Was this like yeah. the classic lineup plus Jax and Kurosashi? Is that who else yeah, is here? Yeah. I only see. Yeah, yeah. the gang is yeah. all here. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I'm only seeing icons. Wow. Like... Jesus Christ, that is a while back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I guess we can move on to topics. And so, yeah, please, yeah. please. Yeah, we, we, we were just saying like a, how our weeks were. Um, but uh, yeah, Jim, have you have you been? How's it? Okay, I've just been trying to get a kid to bed, making dinner. It was, yeah, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I'm good. I'm good. You know, living life, living the yeah. yeah. loca. Um. Mm -hmm. So. I guess with Jim here. Um, oh, with me. Yeah. Everyone else can shut up. Let's see. Do, do, do we, do we <laughs> want to talk, talk about like uh, reviews for the um, movies and shows before we get to the award shows? Because uh, there's two different award shows. Oh, true. Well, if you're going to, I feel like if you do the Annie's, you got to do that before the Oscars. Cause... Yeah, yeah, we will. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, do... we'll, we'll do some uh, some of the, the shows first in, in um, actually, let's start with uh, Mortal Kombat. 
Yeah. Did everyone see that? Uh, uh, exactly. I saw it. Oh, that. <laughs> sure. I it. Okay. I saw that, and, and since I know Jax, I was really disappointed you weren't cast in it. Since oh, what are you talking about? You didn't name me. I smashed the dude's head. <laughs> <laughs> you look really different in a movie. I yeah, I shaved say. my head, dude. Usually I have hair. Oh, that that's yeah. why. That's and usually why. I have a beard, and I shaved it to a mustache. It was, you, you know, see? Bad rally. Okay. That mm-hmm. explains so much. No, also, I put on like 20 pounds and gained like three inches or six inches. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. He's like a giant motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're just all CG. They just like digitally uh, uh, gave you a growth spurt, you know? Yeah, like Bojack and that horse fucking thing where he was mm-hmm. like, yeah, Centuria, whatever. <laughs> That was me, yeah. Audience, I can finally admit that was me in Mortal Kombat. You're welcome. Yes. It was. It was. It Jax was playing college. Jax in Mortal Kombat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was hanging out with Sonya Blade because that's how we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Mortal Kombat was fun. Uh, I, I enjoyed I, it. Yeah. Uh, I'll say, yeah, because pretty much I'll just say what I think uh, before. Um, I, I'll look at it in two ways because I've just been watching stuff without my nostalgia goggles again just because I like to just see how I actually think about it versus um, what I actually uh, – versus me just like letting my bias take over. And uh, I thought it was a fun movie. I thought it was a fun movie. Um, as First, as a mega bias fan of the years, I mean literally reason I chose my username was half of that. Um, I love the action. I love the gore. Uh, I love seeing characters and some I didn't expect. Like, why the fuck did you put Nataro and Raiko in there? Like, it's just like, you took two obscure characters. Okay, I guess th- that would make them fodder. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, I liked uh, the fight scenes between Sub-Zero and Scorpion when they happened, which is, like, good. I like that. Um, some of the comedy was really funny for me. Uh, yeah. There was a lot of common tropes for this stuff where I was like um, – that it just got me mega hyped, but um, without bias, well, I still think it's a fun time. Uh, it needed more Scorpion. There was a lot of stuff that just like it really, really was like you have to know the series where you go into this movie because it's just like oh, oh, uh, by the way, um, this character over here did this, and this is why they're doing this, and this guy he likes to do this, and it's just like but wait, wait, who is this? Who is this person right here? And then there are certain people where they like get their past like for instance scorpion he names himself scorpion for no reason like they don't explain <laughs> yeah. why it's just like i'm scorpion now it's just like why because he yeah why? he uses yeah. like a garden hoe or a garden what is it like he's a garden yeah, he uses that I, I i forget the the name or kunai it's like a kunai tied to a rope yeah, yeah. i forget the, the name to it but like he has that and then, like, uh, like in the freaking Scorpion's Revenge cartoon that came out, which is fun, a really fun movie, they explain why. And then, hell, even in Mortal Kombat Conquest, they explain why. That freaking show from the 90s that not many people remember, but I do. And uh, there, there, there were a few times I was just like, I wonder how many people are going to get this reference or accept this MKBS. Like, for instance, one of the biggest BS things was Jax's arms. Like, I was just like, that to me was just like, I know what, what you're going with it, but you didn't explain it well enough for that to happen. So it's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, this- it was like, he's got robot arms. Now he's got bigger yeah. robot arms? Wait, how? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, magic, right? Because of this thing. And I was just like, uh, okay, what? I just want to see Jax will pass. Yeah. So it's just like, that was, that was fun. Um, I thought overall, I just think it's a fun movie, but I see every single criticism that people have given it. Cause like, again, it, it, it they should have done, if they really wanted to make it be like, um, a series where they like are introducing people to the concept. Cause they try to introduce like this Cole young character who I was like, Oh, is that going to be the younger sub zero? Because that's, um, they have this whole reference of like the zero sub zero in the movie who they had was Bihan, the older brother, but he dies early off in the game series. So it was like, Oh, is that younger one going to be, you know, uh, Kwai Liang, his younger brother, but it's like, Oh no, this is just some self insert. So you can put yourself on him. But it's just like, we have fucking Johnny Cage for that, who you could have used in the movie, but you didn't. Because Johnny Cage is perfect, because Johnny Cage is like, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but okay, like, what are we doing here? Do you think, not to spoil this. Okay. Since I mean, it's Mortal Kombat, but go ahead. <laughs> but Johnny Cage isn't in it. Do you, yeah. I was like, are they going to get like a an actual movie star to play Johnny Cage? In mm-hmm. I don't have any like rumors. I'm just like, because I was like, they're hyping it up that like Johnny Cage has to be a good reveal. 
or it's just like, oh, cool, neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know what? I think like because th- I know they're planning to do like four of these or something like that. I was just like, oh, for okay. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the things I really didn't like. Was there? I hate. I really don't like when movies are like, but you'll be back, and I'm like. I don't know you. Why am I coming back? Like, don't assume. <laughs> like Power Rangers 2017. You'll be yeah. back. Yeah, it's, it's, like, tough. It's, like, it's like the first Iron Man, like, didn't presume I was going to be there for, like, 30 movies over 10 years. It was just, like, a mm. cool movie. And, like, in this one, I didn't get, like, why not have it be the tournament? Like, why mm. have it be this other thing? Yeah, like, that was, plot was, just, I, was, like, I was kind of disappointed it wasn't a tournament. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, that that's not necessarily like a nostalgia gog. Like I've heard people, not you, Jack specifically, mm-hmm. but like other people say that, and I'm like, yeah, but like, it's Mortal Kombat. Like, yeah, it's the yeah. title of the game. Like, it's literally the title. It's like all you have to do is just like have um in a tournament thing, and it's just like Shang Tsung's like, you know, what? fuck that tournament bullshit. All right, and it's just like, yeah, it's just he does that in some of the stuff, but it's like that doesn't happen until after he fucks up the tournament. Cause it's just, you know, honestly, after this, I went back and rewatched stuff from the nineties movie. And I know that one is just like debated. Like some people say it's the best video game movie of all time. Some people say it's just complete trash. Like to me, I'm just like when the nostalgia goggles, I fucking love it. Immortals is iconic. I don't care that theme song iconic, but I can sit down and watch it and go like, okay, you know what? I, I like Liu Kang a lot. I love Johnny Cage in this. Um, the choreography needs some work. Uh, the stuff with Sub Zero and Scorpion, like it has so many quotable moments where I'm like, okay, this is fun to watch. This is fun to go through. And then like um, they actually had a fucking tournament in it. And yeah. uh, that one, that one mm-hmm. like got what it was. Yeah. I feel, like it's not perfect, but it's like, look, we have to be PG thirteen. Yeah. The director didn't really know what he was doing. And it like mm-hmm. sort of works. And this one, it's like I don't think it, they like figured it out. Yeah, I think they're just they were doing like, hey, you know this character? Hey, well, you see the show, you're gonna know this character, right? Yeah. Hey, you know this character? Yeah, so. I like the one guy. Um, I forget his name right now off the top. Of me. He had the one like with the hammer. Suit. The hammer guy was cool, but the guy with the suit. Oh, Cabal. Was, yeah, I like Cabal a lot. He yeah. was. I was like, I want less Kano. I call him Kino, but um, yeah. I, I less Kino and more Cabal, because Cabal yeah. was like a cool character. Like he, I want more in the sequel if we get that, which I think we will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's Mortal Kombat, so. so any character that gets fucked up, it always comes back because it's Mortal Kombat. That's just what happens. And like, I, I, I was curious how they were gonna do um cabal's character because like in the previous ones like the old, old sega games he was like an anti-hero and he was like i'm, I'm not trying to do all, any of this bad shit but like i will do this but then like when the deadly alliance and the deception games came around he like became more of a i'm just evil i'm an evil fucker oh. and so it's like i i was curious what they were gonna do with him but um uh, oh, also, um, something I thought was weird. Uh, I, I I know people loved it because they were cheering in my theater when I saw it, but I thought it was kind of cringy. Was when um they would say like the thing where it's like a flawless victory, fatality. It's just like yeah. you don't have to say we know. I know, like, cause I, cause like, uh, for example, uh, it works. Oh yeah, per- perfect example. So in um freaking uh the original 1994 Mortal Kombat. It works when it happens because it's like, okay, Shang Tsung is watching a match and then he fucking sucks the soul out. So he's like, fatality. And it's just like, oh, yeah, of course, it's fucking fatality. Or when like Liu Kang beats the fucking shit out of Shang Tsung at the end and it's just like flawless victory. And it's just like, okay, I, I can I can, I can do it. But like when they're yeah. just like, oh, fatality, like right afterwards, like I don't think you would, after you dome someone, just say it like that. It seems a bit like weird. It sounds <laughs> more like that line from that other Mortal Kombat game that was going around Twitter where he's like, this is a fatality. This is not a fatality. This, this is, is a fatality. fatality. <laughs> Goodbye. And it was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, Jack, Jack. Uh, uh, and then like, the, the way, like, they fix Jax's arms in the movie, like, I was just like, okay, out of all the ways you went to do, I know I mentioned it earlier, but, like, um, because Jax gets fucked, they show you in this trailer, he gets fucked up bad by Sub-Zero, like, he's yeah. practically dead. It's just like, how the fuck did you survive this? And so, like, they just found him, and they're like, oh, we're gonna get these little screws and bolts and make him some fake-ass arms and stuff like that, and it's just like, you could have, like, had Sonya go to a facility because you know, something I'm realizing is like all the Jaxes besides the one in um, the original Sega game, the 
cartoon show, Defenders of the Realm, and the uh, Annihilation shitty movie, which is a guilty pleasure, uh, they all, like, had their arms, like, put on, but they could take them off, and they had, like, human arms underneath. This, all the New Jacks are like, yeah, no, fuck, your arms, they're prosthetic, bro, fuck you. <laughs> like, you're just getting wrecked, so that was, that, that was funny. Um, what else? What else? Uh, the Arcane, Arcana, what the fuck, Paleo, what was it called? Do you remember the, the word for it? Yeah, I, I think it was, like, your, uh, Ar- Arcana, whatever. Arcana. Yeah. Arcana. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that was silly. That was stupid how this whole thing was like, uh, you have to be a combatant to get this uh, a bit special abilities for yourself. Like, if you don't have this, and so I was just like, man, oh, no. that, that, was, that was a bit silly, in my opinion. Like, that is a bit silly. Like, honestly, I think after rewatching it, I think it's a fun movie. Dev- the Scorpion stuff was great. All the Sub-Zero stuff was hype. But I feel like I would rewatch the 90s movie again. Like, if I was just like enjoying the 90s movie on tv i'd be like okay that or like uh the fucking scorpion's revenge movie the animated one again like i i rewatch it but again i still had fun with this movie i don't i don't hate it but i can completely see all the criticisms people had for it um uh Jax, yes uh, uh before i move forward um yes are, are you at your computer yes i am why okay because you uh yeah, you're on the bag, Mike. I didn't want to interrupt. Uh, oh, no, okay, tell me, dude. I was, <laughs> let, me, let me fix it. Let me fix it. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. you. Okay, hold on. Who was... The other thing with that movie is I haven't played Mortal Kombat since, like, 3, so there was a bunch of people I'm like, who's so, that? Yeah. Oh, since Mortal Kombat 3. I thought, you, I thought you meant, like, since you were 3. I was like, first of all, no. Second of all, you can play that when you were 3. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh, uh, I, was... I, I don't think it was out when you were three. <laughs> no, it, I was, uh, Paleo, I was like making quarters playing Pac-Man like crazy. You don't even know. When I, was <laughs> I, I was doing Contra like all the time. No, um, no, it, it just, I, I'd heard from a lot of people who watched it, who hadn't played it since the 90s. And they were a little like, who are some of these people? And I'm like, well, yeah, but there's been like, a lot of games since 1997 <laughs> you know <laughs> but they it's primarily like the main people it's they don't stray from i don't think right unless i'm wrong i could very much be wrong what for what i have no idea are there like more are there people in the movie that like are in more of the f- other games past three like the wing lady and stuff that they slice in half. Do you know what I'm talking about? I Jax would know more than me. Oh, okay. About, I got called a boomer that. already. But also, also anyway. I, I realized uh, in a recent super chat from a uh, in a friends that or uh, no edit man. Uh, says that we are at 100, 141 episodes of POS podcast when it's actually 142. I forgot to change the number. Uh, <laughs> okay. What was the question? I'm sorry, Jay. I got cut off. Can oh, you hear me um, now? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, okay. What What characters other than oh, like what, what were the characters who were not in like the first couple games or in like the most like who were in the later games past like three? In oh, the- like Natara. Natara yeah. is the vampire girl who got like fucking domed by Kung Lao, and then yeah. um, Raiko. He's from Mortal Kombat Four. So like yeah, he has like this like weird mask and shit like that. And then like um Cabal's been there since three. Uh mm-hmm. Melina's been there since two. Uh yeah, yeah. And then like uh, the the main six, of course, <laughs> from Mortal Kombat. And then <laughs> no, except no, but yeah, Johnny Cage, he wasn't there. And then Cole was a self-insert, but like Goro, yeah, Goro was in it. So probably the next one's gonna have Kintaro, fucking big ass furry want Goro. And yeah, I, I think that was pretty much it. I kind of want, I don't know if you know who Scott Atkins is, but I kind of want him. Oh, yeah, to Scott Johnny. Atkins is fucking awesome, dude. He'd be oh, okay. great as Johnny Cage. Yeah, I think he should be Johnny Cage. Like, I want someone like that. Like, I yeah. think he's the only white guy who could pull it off currently. So. Yeah, well, you remember that um that Mortal Kombat TV, not the YouTube web series they had. It was like, it came out like in 2010, I believe. I, I remember it, but it's been a long time, so. Yeah, I 
I never saw it all the way through because I just I thought it was on something else. So I didn't see it, but I remember uh, hearing about it. And like they had a great Johnny Cage in that, like the way the actor portrayed him. So I forget the actor's name, but yeah, 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 crazy. All right, um, just moving on. Uh, we can talk a little bit about Infinity Train Book Four, and also you know the fact Ooh. that there's not okay. Infinity Train anymore. Tell me afterwards. I'll mute myself. But it's Infinity it. Train was finite after it's, all. Oh, if it's an Infinity it's Train, it never ends, bro. Well, it's fucking over. How do I mute myself? Shit, let me move. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know how to mute myself. I'm trying to mute myself. I thought it would... I don't know. I, I, I did enjoy it. It was a good season yeah, book. I mean, uh, yeah, I was in it, so... You? Oh, yeah. yeah. What was that like? Yeah, it was, it was really weird. <laughs> Um, it, <laughs> I I enjoyed book four. I like when that shows like you kind of think you know what it's gonna do, and then it's like, no, nah, we're gonna do this now, and that's right. sort of like this, you know, which which I appreciate. I thought it was. I mean, cool. because like I mean, I, I I guess that's how an anthology show like usually is, but I guess we were expecting yeah like some other things. I yeah because one went into two and two went into three right and four was like let's have this about an indie band in the late eighties yeah <laughs> that you probably don't remember so real cool but I don't know I I really like that show I I liked how like you don't really hear people talk about creative partnerships like that so I thought that was kind of neat yeah I'm yeah, yeah. and Finn no, go ahead. Go, Tom. go, 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 go. No, I, I, I was just gonna like talk about how it's very unfortunate because um, with book five they were going to have a bunch of more stuff explained about like Amelia and um, uh, some of the other characters. Yeah, I was looking at some of the stuff that the the creator was talking about, and it's like kind of like impromptu AMA after the end of it. The dude just seems soul crushed, and I don't like it. I'm really upset that this guy clearly put like all of his passion into this project, and oh. HBO slash Cartoon Network slash yeah, some stupid may, executive mainly fuck. Cartoon Network because I I think like it, it it seems like HBO is like likes it but cartoon networks like no we're moving in a different direction well, now i think the problem with hbo max is that netflix would probably be a better place for it because hbo max is like divvied up into those sections right and and it is kind of like where does infinity train go in that and i don't know if there is an easy answer because you could put it into three different categories like hbo max original cartoon network or adult swim and I, th I don't think HBO Max is good at things that are a little on the bubble of all those things, or at least currently. They should be better at that because you have a huge streaming service. Like, there's really no reason to not keep it on, but maybe the numbers aren't as big as we all want them to be, which I've sort of wondered. But Or it's too expensive, but I don't think that's the case. Yeah. Um, but J.K. Simmons might have eaten up all that budget for Pig Baby. I think that, you know... <laughs> When I found out that he was Pig Baby, I was like, oh, God. Yeah, what? what? <laughs> Why? I imagine they sent him the script and they're like, you can be a denizen. You can be, and he's like, I want Pig Baby. And they're like, no, but you're J.K. Simmons. And he was like, you give me Pig Baby or I walk. And they're like, <laughs> I, I guess you're fine. I. <laughs> like we're paying all this money and you're just going to have a temper tantrum. Like, okay. And, and I imagine he just sat in the studio all day to get into character just to do those three lines. Like, he, he cost so much money, J.K. Simmons, to give the perfect pig baby. Now we know why the show was canceled. They're like, why'd you get J.K. Simmons for this? It's like, look, it wasn't, that's not, that wasn't the plan, all right? We were going to sell it on J.K. Simmons. We're like, we can't sell pig baby. Oh, okay. What do you mean? Here's, of course you can sell pig baby. Here, Here's my thoughts on, on book four. Um... I've been a huge Infinity Train proponent ever since I first stumbled onto it. I think it was between book two and three is when I finally got caught on. And I was like, oh, this is fucking fantastic. Yeah. Um, season one, 
totally, totally took me off guard. I was expecting, because like, I'm one of those people who like judges a book by its cover, I guess, to a certain degree, because I'm like such a visual person. And I felt that the art style Infinity Train was like good, serviceable, but not great, you know, especially like around at the same time of like Amphibia and, and Owl House coming out. Like, I think those shows visually are a lot stronger than Infinity Train. Um, so I was like kind of not super looking forward to it. And I kind of let it fall into the back burner. But then the content was just so good. The concept and like the way it was like really deeply exploring these characters. And so like the end of like season one, I was like, holy shit, this is way better than I thought. It's like so much better than those other two shows. It's on a totally other level, just like cerebrally, what it's right. trying to do, what it's trying to say. And then season two, like goes even further and like pushes even farther beyond what I expected the show to be with like these like subtle, like indirect, but direct connections and like taking a character that was like almost in the background and becoming a central character in the second season and like delving deeper and just the lore of the train and like all these things that like these, all these complex characters. I'm like, this is like the best cartoon that's like airing right now. It's like so fucking good. And three, even then took it even further and did even more crazy shit. I'm like this is baller as fuck. Like, I love this show. It's so good. Like, I don't even care about, like, the man art style anymore. Like, I'm in this to win it. It's fucking great. So when they announced book four, I was, like, so stoked. But at the same time, like, really upset that it was the last season, even though there were supposed to be eight. Like, because it's, yeah. it's a sideways infinity symbol, which I thought was a nice little clever thing. But I was, like, I don't know what they're going to do because there's just so much. There's so much, like... Like, like it's a rich tapestry of all this lore and just like conflicting character motivations. And there's recurring, you know, characters throughout all of the books. And you're just like, I want to know about all of these people. And um, I was interested to see what else they would tell us about like the train and all these things. Cause like each season up to this point kind of delved deeper into the lore and like more of these like things and like the character and the stories got a little bit darker and a little bit more like intertwined with like the inner machinations of like how the train worked and everything. Book four is super solid but it feels like season two it feels like to me like the natural follow-up of what i would expect infinity train to be after ending season one like a right. really strong character study that yeah. is almost completely hands off from the lore and the underlying kind of like uh uh uh, stuff like they were examining with how the train works and like what it is and what it's trying to be um because that's not touched on at all this season at all and it feels like it's almost kind of undercut by the fact that it's the final season, you know, like you really kind of want to go out with a bang and this kind of felt like a middle season or like a season two. It just felt so close in tone to the first season where the, the two and three really felt like they were building up momentum. And this kind of went back to that. And I guess if you're working with eight parts, this probably laid some groundwork for stuff that would be, explored going forward because like even looking at the guys like tweets after the season aired he was clearly like there was a very clear and like obvious and laid out plan like they were not flying loose with this shit um he had a bunch of ideas so i'm sure there was a bunch of seeds planted in book four that would have continued to explore all the way into the end but like as a conclusion to a show it doesn't feel super satisfying because like all right. the lingering questions are still there and they weren't even teased a little bit throughout the entire runtime. So like, I it, would almost an, suggest. Yeah. I, I was going to say, uh, it's, they, they didn't even get like any like notice to like wrap up any kind of thread because yeah. he, right. they, he found out in December that, Oh yeah, we're not making a, another season. It's so, a, it's so, so it's like, brutal. Oh, right. Shit. And like, I feel like I I don't think he, I think even if he knew earlier, just from the way he's been talking on Twitter, I don't think he would have wrapped anything up. I think he would have kept it almost exactly the same way it is now, because like he was saying, like, yeah, I really want someone else to pick it up or I want to continue it in comic form. Like, yeah. I think he has this very specific story that needs things to happen that he wants to tell. And I don't think he, even if he knew going into four that it was the last one, he probably would have rolled the dice on, I'm just going to keep going and hope that it picks up momentum or someone else picks it up. Um, Cause I think he's really committed to this. Like just the way he talks about this story is just like with such care and affection that like, it really hurts that, that they took this away from him, you know? Yeah. And it's really bugging me because it was such a good idea. 
If if we can get fucking S the Snyder cut, we can get the, no the next the shit, next next right? four books of Infinity Train. I, 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 <laughs> like, I will say, right. I I will say, and I I know I've said this other places, but like if the people who like Infinity Train like please like buy a billboard or something because yeah I feel like there there are I, like yeah, I the other like day this... I saw restore the Snyderverse trending I was like no you got you got your cake you got yeah, you got yeah. your cake well yeah yeah those, those people I love if you watch any of the videos on that there's a specific thing they always leave out which is that Ben Affleck does not want any part of that shit right. anymore <laughs> and they always if you watch anything about it cuz I'm always like I wonder like if they address that and they always leave it out because literally every time he's asked he's like no i was nice to zack snyder i shot that scene but you know i i worked around my schedule but i'm done and it's like you can't do it without him it's over but i do think like i don't like the snyderverse fans they're awful but like the smart thing they did was they bought they wouldn't shut up and they bought things and the infinity train people like make a kickstarter do something big you know if you want i i know i'm you know I'm asking a lot, but if you really mean it, show it. Because HBO Max doesn't care that much that you're trending on Twitter or TikTok um, as much as I think they think it does. It's it's nice, but it's you know oh, not... it's all dollars. That's all they care about. Yeah, and if you if you embarrass them at Comic Con and they're like, "What's this Infinity Train thing, man? What's going on?" Much like the Snyderverse people did, then they'll go like, "Okay, we we kind of just want them to shut up at this point, so we'll let them have." <laughs> <laughs> this stupid thing about like Amelia or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the next, the <laughs> next like in, in person Comic Con that happens, just like bother the Warner Brothers booth or what something. I will, <laughs> I will say that is something. I was thinking about this. The thing that really hit Infinity Train hard is that that show first season came out actually right around the time we went to BronyCon, believe it or not. Oh really? Uh, but yeah, it's like August 2019. There are barely any conventions. You know, we don't get the new convention season because COVID hits and already two books are out. Book three comes out. There's obviously no cons. Now book four comes out and there's not going to be a real con until like 2023, 2024 at this point. So it's just like like any momentum that show could have in terms of fandom. I don't and I'm not trying to be a naysayer because I do really love that show a lot. But it's just like it, it's. A victim, a victim of victim of circumstance. Yeah. yeah, because like by the, the time, hype train never left the station. Yeah, because if there had been cons in twenty twenty, it would have been a big fixture. But since there weren't, and there's and by the time there is, there's going to be another thing that takes off, and you'll be like, oh, one one, yeah, that was that from the the train thing, the locomotive right. show. Um, so I think. Uh, you know, I do hope it continues. I hope he gets to do comics. I know DC. Every and every time Restore the Snyderverse that, but... starts trending, just reply with Restore Infinity Train. <laughs> Hashtag Infinity Train hype train. Infinity <laughs> Train go, hype go, train. Go. You know what? You know what we should do? Let's let's change it to the um, Quad City DJs, and it should say, "Come on, ride the train," <laughs> and post that music video. That's. I'm very disappointed. Like, I love Cameo and Word Up, but I was like, you could have had Quad City DJs in Infinity Train. How did that not happen? Like, it's just, it's so there. It bothers me, but, you know, whatever. That's I, why I we also, need four more seasons to write this wrong. Yeah, I also wish networks would let creators have the rights because think of what Alex Hirsch could do with a Gravity Falls wow. game. Think of what Owen oh, Dennis could do. Like let these guys make some shit. Like it'd be cool. Like I don't see what the problem is, but they we'll just see. want to hold on to the merch rights or whatever. Yeah. Or selling DVDs and Blu-rays and get residuals for streaming. I don't fucking know. And sometimes they're um, just dicks. All right. Um get Hero and Dax back in here. Also Saber and see if he's I am back. Oh, okay. Saber was on the Infinity Train this whole time. I was a. Um, uh, you're what? I, I haven't finished book four, but I kind of stayed away. Because I, when I walked back, I'm like, oh, they're talking about Infinity Train. I'll wait. Yeah. But uh, yeah. um, but next thing, uh, let's talk about Arlo. Uh, okay. Who's Arlo? The, the alligator. Puppet? You know the puppet? Okay. 
I know, I know that I, I know that Jack's uh, like in the uh, in our in our uh, private Discord earlier. We're talking about um, like who would win in a fight, Arlo, the alligator boy, Arlo the dinosaur from the Good Dinosaur, or Arlo, Arlo the uh, the puppet on on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> that puppet is crazy. He'll got a gun. Yeah, dinosaurs ain't bulletproof. Okay, I'm, I'm, with, <laughs> I'm with Jacks on that. Yeah. Get an M16, blah, 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 fucking like animal. You know how violent Muppets are? <laughs> like it's actually <laughs> kind of concerning. So, okay. so, did, so did anybody besides me and Saber watch Arlo? I did. Uh, I have did a lot. Did you watch Arlo? Okay. Yes, I did. I, what, what did you think of it? I, I liked it a lot. I watched it with my daughter, Sophie. She really liked it. She's watched it twice. Um, I, I do think it was basically the plot of the Muppets movie. Um, oh which, my god it is yeah it's like pretty, <laughs> it's pretty exact but it, it was a good version of that um i didn't love much like with mortal Kombat that they clearly set things up for the series which is coming out this year very I much like because that that's that's the main thing that bothered me about it is that it, 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 this feels like an ad for a series. uh where is i mean it's, not not too much yeah but not, there were it, it's still like really good and and as far as like the animation the music all that it's just like the story is just kind of okay um but the animation yeah. and music are are good and there's there's some things yeah. that made me like chuckle as as i mean i also i like um both as like an animation fan and as a parent like the each of the characters were very visually distinct and different yeah and it's like both like cool because um, if someone mentions one of them, I instantly remember their personality, except for that fish guy. I didn't yeah, like I didn't but, like the fish guy either. <laughs> yeah, he, he, I was like, whatever with him. But um, I liked that, like, it had celery different body types. Like, the girl was like this large, like this big girl and like very strong. And like, I thought that was a positive message. And I liked all the songs. And I do find it interesting Netflix with this and Over the Moon, they seem to like to do pop songs a lot. That seems to be yeah. their. Mm-hmm. No, I, their I, thing. I would say I, I like over the moon's music a lot better uh, uh like, yeah. well i liked over luminary a lot but the rest yeah. i wasn't over familiar. luminary you didn't like the fucking one where she was fighting the oh he was fighting i don't remember oh with the hamilton about. rapping i i can't i have a, i yeah his broadway oh, no. rapping in that was not for me i oh, i don't rapping. like oh, oh i know what you're talking about yeah i know yeah they don't do like to me it's like like I don't have any problems with Hamilton, but sometimes I'm like, I want to like not hear you so clearly. Like that's not, it's mm-hmm. not. I don't know. That gets a little like phony, but right. Um, that's just a personal thing, probably. But uh, I, I, I do. I don't know. Over the Moon did have a, a decent soundtrack, but I sort of like like them singing in the water, whatever that was, and stuff like that. So yeah. And and uh, Titmouse did a good job. Like the animation was really yeah yeah. It's well it's done. Good. So. What did you and Saber think? I um, I'm right there with Paleo, where I thought Arlo himself was kind of plain a bit. It felt like a less interesting version version of Wander from Wander for Yonder, and even then, I'm not crazy about Wander either. Maybe I'm just not that fond of like, wow, golly gee willikers! I'm <laughs> Wait. so are you I saying you're okay, 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 okay. are you saying you're over Yonder then? Over this, wow. <laughs> I'm over this conversation. Oh, I get it. It's, fine. it's <laughs> like, for, for example, like, um, you need a little bit of like, like, okay, like for Fix It Felix, I think him being a bit of a cute, like, I'm optimistic, but I'm also have my reservations of why things are getting out of hand. That's a better balance to it versus Arlo, where I understand why he's so wide eyed optimist. It's part of his character of going to New York and discovering that, oh no. It's New York. Get out of there. No. Um, actually, Jim, as a person who lives in New York, what do you think about the entire gentrific- gentrification? Oh, my fucking God, you know what I mean? Gentrification stuff. Um, I mean, I think it was... I, I liked what it was saying about, like, because I am more on the fence, so even though I think I'm probably considered a gentrifier, or if people see me in the neighborhood, they're like, oh, that's what he is. But... I'm more on the side of like preserving the neighborhood and the culture there. So I liked how they showed, especially to, again, like I like the moral for kids because it was like, 
they showed that the kids, um, that there was like a culture there. And even if it's not in the best shape, you should still try to preserve it. So I thought that was a cool way to. And it's also saying that it. they're all mutants. Well, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I did, I did like how they did New York. All that toxic waste. New York is kind of like, um, like it has all these different crazy things going on with it. And it, I think it captured it pretty well. You know, it reminded me of Oliver and Company a little bit in capturing New York because that movie. Not the yeah, greatest, yeah. but captured New York pretty well. Arlo, uh, yeah, biggest issue with Arlo, the alligators, Arlo. And funny enough, you also you didn't care for the fish guy. I thought he was kind of funny. I, I wasn't crazy over his design. But at this point, I feel like I'll let the show, like I'll give it the benefit of the doubt for now. Let's see what the show can do. Mm-hmm. And then I'll take it from there. Oh, the tiger girl was cute. The little Italian guy was cute. True. Um, Birdie was, uh, I, I was kind of a bit more with, with her background, but all in all, we'll see where it goes. It didn't knock my socks off, but visually outstanding and some really great like song segments that were very well executed with like the storyboards and what they're trying to do with the visuals and flowing with the music. So in that regard, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch. Just Arlo's kind of boring. All right. Um, Next thing. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, I oh, think, two, no. Yeah, I think we'll no. do, do a spoiler thing for this. All right, just tag me guys already. All right. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. What a scrub. All right, so uh, Jackson and uh, Jim, I know you two have watched it. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to put up a spoiler tag because like, basically the whole episode is a spoiler. Um, so when fucking Superman and Batman show up, it was a fucking hype as shit ever. So, so if, you don't, if you don't want any spoilers, just mute the stream. Um, I have the uh, spoiler tag up. When it goes down, you can unmute. Um, so yeah, Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, last episode, basically the big, like, you know, the movie budget part of the show. Um, True. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Um. Which uh, th- this this sh- this series compared to WandaVision definitely had a lot more like of that movie budget um, action in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, they were like, yeah, we can't uh, do what we gotta do. Uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, oh, let me see. Like, what is there anything I didn't? Like? No, I think I, I liked it for the most part because this is just an overview of the whole thing. Like, I'll talk about like my thing of the episode and then overview of the series. Um. I I like the I I liked uh, how they built up Sam's character all the way through. Yeah. I like the fact that they reference like things of like oh well um, the mix and match of like how um, Isaiah the old um, black soldier who was like you know super soldier like uh, Steve how like when Steve went out to save all those people he got hailed as a hero when he came back he was like that that was like episode five but like um how Sam like decided to listen to that and go no I'm this is what I'm gonna do and what how I'm gonna do it and then the fact that he like um came through rocked a badass suit love that suit like that shit was fucking dope I love seeing that in live action um I loved uh, seeing the, the the speech that he gave, like that whole speech at the end, where he's just like, "Look, you won't let me be this way," and like I can already tell from all the judging eyes. So I thought that was just magnificent. Love that part. Uh, um, uh, I love the scene at the end with uh, Isaiah in the museum. That made me man to your heart. I'm not even gonna lie. I man to your heart at that bad house. Like you got me. That 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 was that was a good one. And then um, most part. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I would say, like, overall, as a series, like, I enjoy it. Like, there are a few things that they, they changed a bit, you know, like a whole identity of power broker. I was like, oh, okay, then that's, that's the route they're going with this. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. They did oh, kind of go like, oh, you're, yeah, it's me. And you're like, yeah, what? exactly. What? I mean, like, no. yeah, yeah, because the, the whole thing with that is, like, I guess you couldn't like it would have been weird if they introduced someone later on who wasn't like already introduced like oh yeah by the way it's me all along so it, it made yeah. sense for her to be like for um sharon yeah sharon to be the power broker and it and it's just like you know a fallen hero story so it's just like oh that's, that's sad and stuff like that yeah. 
And then um, uh, I liked Madam Hydra giving um, John Walker's black suit and stuff like that. So uh, I, I know so a few people have been talking about this. So since like um, Zemo's in the raft and then we see all these people, I'm wondering if they're going to do like a Thunderbolt show. And the Thunderbolts is just like with like reformed supervillains and like antiheroes and shit like that. So I wonder if they are working towards that in the future since mm -hmm. like they have Zemo there. That, that, that'd be that's, an interesting thing. That's been the, the talk that mm -hmm. they're... I mean, there's no like confirmed, but that's everyone's theory that they're building to a mm -hmm. Thunderbolts thing. I don't know when, but yeah. Whatever. Do you think it'll be Red Hulk in it? Or do I don't you think know. Or will just say Ross? <laughs> it seems to be like the two things that every fan or like when people go through every Easter egg kind of video, they always go, Young Avengers is happening and Thunderbolts. People are like, the Easter eggs are there for both. And I'm like, I mean. And I most definitely Mephisto. You saw yeah. that last episode, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, technically he's everywhere. So yeah. I've been seeing him since Iron Man 2. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> True fans know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, the real so, fan. So one thing I, I thought was interesting, um, is I, I watched like um Black Nerd Comedy's uh review and Double Dose's review today uh on mm. the episode. Um and one thing about this series, even from like the first episode that I noticed, I was like, this this show was supposed to come out last year with all the stuff that happened last year. Um, yeah. And uh, apparently from what I what I heard on the Double Toaster review is that this was also supposed to have some kind of like virus thing, like plot yeah. points. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, they, they had like to reshoot things for that. It was like, oh, does Disney, uh, do they have like some kind of premonition? Like, because, mm. like, in 2019, they, they had, like, their biggest world. year for movies ever uh, before Dude, the pandemic it, happened. The war, the Earth is a sphere, and we're just waiting for those two orbs to pop up on it to just show that he has control over everything, okay? Like, yeah, they... <laughs> Yeah. I do I do wonder about that because they like because apparently they had like four or five episodes shot like there's a whole episode that wasn't or something mm -hmm. you can sort of tell like people have pointed out shots where like it looks a little different or so someone looks like they gained more weight and I'm like I don't I can't see that in that one edit but sure um Oh, you mean no. like uh the, again? I love Sam. I love Anthony Mackie. But like, there were parts like when during his training montage, I was like, "That is a clear stunt double," and I was just like, "Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. like I can see yeah. like, that whole thing." <laughs> like he's like, "I do not believe Anthony Mackie's forty year old self is doing all these flips and doing all this." I, I love oh, yeah. Anthony Mackie. He's he great. forty. No, I like yeah. him too. I wish he was like a bigger star. I've never understood why he's not. Oh, he, did you hear his speech on like what it was with that? Like, uh, cause he, I think he, he brought it up in this like great speech where he's saying how like, um, well, Hollywood did. doesn't have movie stars anymore. They just have like, um, series of franchises. Like he says, like the Falcon's a movie star. Anthony Mackie is not iron. And it's just like, it's like, we don't have any, I forget the whole thing, but no, yeah. I've, I've heard it. I, I agree with what he was saying. He seems to mm -hmm. understand how this works at this point because right, right. he he kind of came in he was coming up i mean he was in eight mile but he wasn't really that big mm -hmm. then but like um mm -hmm. he's the guy eminem raps there's a home of both parents and claire's parents have a real good man <laughs> yeah that guy yeah that guy <laughs> that guy yeah. um, but he like really blew up um around hurt locker mm -hmm. and, and i think like yeah he kind of missed the boat on the movie star thing but mm -hmm. he still like gets to be part of the MCU and like doing this. And I think he's a good Captain America. He is, you know, I also like that, like that whole show is really with his arc. I have mixed feelings about because like, I feel like winter soldier, you get all these um, specific instances from his life about why he is a certain way. Right. And with Falcon, they're just like, well, all of racism. And I'm like, I don't know. I feel mm -hmm. like there should be more specific, although that is still part of it. And I'm not going to yeah. act like, Right, right. Like, that's still part, but I wish there had been something like, I don't know what it would have been, but just a little more exact with that. But I did the whole thing with the identity. Like, I kept thinking, like, would you really want to give up those wings to be, like, Captain America? Like, do, he likes being fun. And I liked when they he, they made his Captain America. It wasn't Steve Rogers' as Captain America. And I think right. he needed to, like, figure that out so i thought that was a good but i don't know mm. the structure of that show got a little messy towards the end because like oh i agree i agree with that an episode before 
And then I was like, what is going on? It, it was just like, I was all in with the show until I think it's episode five. And then I really started to fall off. But I, I, I like him in Winter Soldier. I just wish they had, there was more of a reason for them to be together that the show seemed to forget about. Mm -hmm. Like make it about their dynamic more. And I don't know. I think they did have reshoot problems and you could tell like, the, the last episode is kind of like this is the ending it almost feels a little unearned like they sort of convinced us like see he's captain america and we're good and you're like wait what what mm -hmm. but you wrap this up there it's just like i feel like they can do better but um you know and i kind of want anthony mackie i feel like he could have had a better they should have written his role better he performed it great like he mm -hmm. makes you believe it works better than it does right right um, and i also like that like you know I've heard more talk about um, the Tuskegee experiment and the comic yeah. series truth and like a lot of that stuff that like, I was not hearing about those specifics and I looked it up way more these past six weeks than I ever had in my life. So it's like, I think that's a healthy, so there's good that probably more good that came of this than WandaVision. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure exactly. Right. I mean, it's like um, with uh, the Watchmen show where like they had yeah. like those things where they like reference of it. It's like, Oh, I'm going to Google what that is. And I was just like, Oh, that's interesting. So yeah, it's you're like, you're like, <laughs> A lot of people went, holy shit, wait, what? Yeah, holy shit, wait, what? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, and then, like, I think Double Toast had mentioned this, uh, too, where it was, like, um, I think this show, like, it had the potential to have, like, more rewatchability than, like, WandaVision. Because, like, with WandaVision, the whole thing was, like, it's a mystery. You don't know what's right. going on. Like, you're, like, zoomed in, like, what the fuck is happening? And so, like, every episode was, like, how are they going to resolve this? What the fuck is happening? So going back and watching it from day one and knowing exactly, while it'll still be a fun time, it's just, like, well, I already know where this is going and stuff like that. So that that's that's an interesting concept with the whole thing. But um, I mean, I, I had fun for it. Like, what's the next one they have? Is it Loki or is Loki's it Shang? Next. Okay, yeah. Is Shang Chi a movie or a show? It's a movie. A movie. movie. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, it comes okay. out after Black Widow. I think it's okay. theaters only, or at least right now. Yeah. Okay. Right now it is. Um. But yeah. Um. Yeah. Falcon Winter Soldier. I I enjoyed it. I'm enjoying the Mar Marvel shows. Um. So. Yeah. Hopefully All they right. bring back Punisher, but they won't. Let me uh, tag uh, those people. Yeah. I'm here. Done. Oh, good. I'm here. All right. I have one thing. I don't so. care about any. <laughs> Saber's the next one. <clears throat> Tom, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so the next thing, uh, let's talk about some of the awards, the Annies. Yay. Yeah, dude, which were I very, watched... very smooth with how they did the virtual thing. Yeah, they were. It was good. Someone should be watched... taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. What was it? <laughs> Thanks to the Annies, I watched Wolf Walkers. Yeah. That was really yeah. Cool. yeah. Wolf Walkers was was are amazing. Yeah, that was a or good ass movie. movie. No, no, all the wolf walkers are. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. That shit was that was a good ass movie. But then, like, it just made me have existential thoughts about them sleeping. So, like, that was it. Like, it's but yeah, just like, and, and I I love how like certain uh, uh, nominees when they won, they had like their own custom video that they they posted. Like Gendy. Yeah, like Gen Gen he, he, he used this, the same one twice because he won twice for uh, Primal. Yeah, exactly. He deserved it. Like, yeah. it made me. Because I remember I was watching the Annie's the only issue I ever had with it, like not even an issue, was just like, okay, so for example, Primal God tier show, no one denies that. Hilda, phenomenal show, no one denies that. And so it's just like oh, they're getting awards, and it's like, of course they're gonna get awards, but it's like Rise of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's just like, why you put my boys next to these? I mean, just give them their own <laughs> yeah. category, give them like a fight category or something. Like, just please, just say fight category oh, or something. No, we can't. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just like they would go back to your head. anime. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the the problem with. It's sort of like a weird problem to have with animation right now. Is like there's like three or four things that just are so good and dominate everything, and then there's like all these things underneath that mm -hmm. none of us have enough time to watch or cover or make videos about. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, like saddle like, rash. Yeah. True. Like saddle rash. I don't know. I've been hearing that there's going to be a major hmm. of that, but I don't know what. Yeah, dude, I, I, dude, they're so, casting like Nicolas yeah, Cage. Yeah. A, a lot, a lot of the, uh, 
So a, a lot of the the winners made sense. Uh, one that was kind of upsetting to me was like uh, best writing, Big Mouth is like, oh okay. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. The thing about that fucking uh, Big Mouth episode, okay, because like the the line they use, because as someone who actually watches Big Mouth, as Hero says, this is a show that is just you turn it on three a.m. you turn your brain off. Like there's some yeah. things in Big Mouth because I'm not gonna stand the, the, up for the, Big Mouth. The, even even the thing with the best writing, the nominees, I wouldn't even say those episodes are like the best written of that year yeah exactly exactly because like the thing with big mouth is like there are certain things where i'm just like damn you just said some real shit oh if I, you actually said oh wow that is how trans kids would probably react okay fine you know what shit or like the, there was this one i showed hero the code switching thing where i was just like that's genius i i fucking hate to give it to you but that code switching thing where like black people switch their t tone of voice with no matter who they're talking to like that shit that was genius like that is the only time i'll give big mouth anything but yeah that was that's yeah, like, but yeah, Wolf Walkers and Soul like uh took away a lot of it really yeah, hard. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then for for like shows like Primal, Hilda, uh, of course they, they won stuff. Um, like but like, Wolf like won Best Director over Soul, which was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I'm I'm glad Tom Moore got that. Um, mm -hmm. and also uh, Best Voice Acting went to Eva Whitaker, the um, uh, who who voiced the um the the Wolf Walker girl in uh wolf walkers because they weren't at the annies there weren't too many categories they were competing against each other were there i mean it seemed like the few that were wolf walkers would win i'm not looking at yeah the, i mean, I mean wolf walkers sure was in a lot of categories where soul was also in and because they were also in for like best production design and uh wolf walkers won that yeah because um, i was surprised how much because yeah. usually and, and also it with... was also in uh, uh competing with soul and best music but soul won that one Mm -hmm. I mean that's a really good score though. I yeah, think that yeah. that's that's kind of a hard score to to beat. Um, but it, I don't know. I noticed that helped the surge of support I kept hearing for Wolf Walkers because mm -hmm. people went like, you know, well, I I mean I don't think most of the general public doesn't know what the Annies are, but I I kept hearing more and more support for Wolf Walkers as leading up to the Oscars because yep. I think people just loved it so much. What? You know, with um, with the Annies, um, also compared to the Oscars, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, yeah, it feels so much more genuine. <laughs> like the 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 nominees when they they accept their awards, or or mm -hmm. you know, or silly or like fun, like with Gendy accepting it in the shower, um, yeah, or, like, or the the people from Cartoon Saloon like being locked in a locked in a closet. It was like, oh, we got an award. <laughs> mm. Oh, that was good. Um, Oscars just doesn't go that way. Yeah. Um, and also there was like um, uh, somebody for I think it was uh, character design for the Looney Tunes shorts that are on <laughs> HBO Max, and like the the guy the guy there uh, is actually an artist that I follow on Twitter, and I was like, oh, I know him because like, I recognized a uh, plushie in the back. I was like, that's one of his characters. Mm. That's a good the Looney Tunes. I feel like those shorts are. Need to be more praised. They're so good. They're just those new Looney Tunes shorts are. I love them. I watch them like once a week with Sophie. But, oh, it's best storyboard. Yeah, yeah the storyboard. It was a, a storyboarder <laughs> on that. Uh, show. Yeah, no, that show yeah. deserves that, that. Those the storyboards on that are really great. Like the gags, just that one where Daffy Duck has the gum. Like they, they're just that show's genius. I gotta say, those, those new shorts. Anyway, sorry. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um. The Danny's were were really good this year. Um, they really streamlined it, uh, having it virtual. Um, uh, we'll see what what happens uh, next year with it. Uh, hopefully, a lot more like animated content does come out uh, this year. Right. Which it's it's mm. funny because like uh, compared to the movie nominations, uh, there were a lot lot more uh, nominations that made sense for the Annie's compared to things that made sense in the oscars mm -hmm. right mm. nice um all right so moving on to the oscars oh boy oh. Oh. so what the fuck was that huh? i know <laughs> that was uh, uh <laughs> i don't know man that was real bad. That, they kind of dropped the ball on that. Like, so just like every year at the Oscars then. True, but 
this was a I just like that they were like let's let's do let's change up the order let's do they they apparently the last time they did not have best picture and the night was when they gave this tribute to like Charlie Chaplin <laughs> after he <laughs> wait, been wait, kicked out of America for 40 years what I was say one Wolf Walker's winning five Annies is a victory for the Sons of Scotland they win five Oscars <laughs> it's Irish <laughs> <laughs> True. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Yeah, I thought it was, it was, funny. It was, it was just it was just bad because they like ended it and then like no one knew what to do and they're like, all right. We're leaving. Sorry about the Chadwick Boseman thing. We we tried. We just thought we just thought this would work out. Oh, was the Chadwick Boseman thing? I just saw like a gold head, but that was it. That's all. Oh I've well, seen. that's that's the NFT. That's another horrible thing they did. If you were yeah. a nominee for the Oscars, you got a gift bag, and one of them was an NFT of Chadwick Boseman's head. Okay, that yeah. is interesting. That's, that's dystopian bullshit. I hate it. Yeah. Did, and you, then, did you guys see any of the tweets? Because all my art people I follow were flipping shit over the, the Chadwick Boseman NFT. So oh. like, do you know, do you know, have you heard any of the, the backstory to the NFT? Did, so I did, I was seeing the tweets from the artist where he was like, look, this is important. This is going to be the <laughs> biggest money, the most an NFT by a black artist has already sold for. And I was like, dude, this is a weird hill for you to, to, to die it's, on right now. That's like, <laughs> the tip of the iceberg so okay the oh, nft yeah. to anybody who doesn't know is mm. just like a goal it's like an animation of like a gold bust of chadwick boseman's head and just kind of spins around there's like some effects on it and like yeah. it's typical crypto if you look at like nfts and crypto art that's like the style um that's just kind of how they all seem to look for some reason i don't mm. really know but here's the thing guy announces on twitter I've had the honor of creating an NFT to to uh, represent Chadwick Boseman and his legacy. And immediately okay. people are like, hey, we noticed you happened to download a $50 model off 3D Trader of Chadwick Boseman's <laughs> head, change it to gold, and are now selling it for $1.2 million in Ethereum. Hmm, that's pretty strange. Good job claiming you made it, even though you literally just downloaded an asset off an asset store, painted it gold, and uh, are now making a fuck ton of money off of it. Such legacy, such honor. We love you so much. And that was the thing that he was getting dragged for for a while. And then uh, another artist piped up. He's like, actually, that particular model that he downloaded from CG Trader was commissioned from me. And the guy listed it on there and never paid me for it. So wow. the original artist gets nothing. The dude who's getting the money for it just paid $50 off an asset flip. Damn. Damn. Incredible. That's what is ridiculous. Did Wakanda get any money or? Uh, mm, I think they're, they're they're probably the ones running. They're probably the ones farming all the Ethereum at this point with their oh, advanced computers. Okay. You know. Okay. What did his family think of this? Did Bozeman's family say anything? Dude, uh, hey, I, I don't hey, even Bozeman. know. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just so creepy. We took your son's head and we made a 3D print and now it's spitting around it's gold. And it's like, uh Like, they I mean, were... teach their own, I guess, with how they want to process this, but that feels, like, wrong. <sighs> no, it's... The no, whole thing wrong. with NFT, there's nothing good about NFTs. They're, like, they're like the most hateable thing I can think of. Yeah. Is there any, Tom, Tommy Oliver would know. Is there anything good about NFTs? They're... It's just like cryptocurrency in general, where the concept is actually really good, but greed ruined it immediately, you know, because mm -hmm. like NFTs are just a way of like, essentially, they're just digital collectibles. That's that's all it really is. Right. Mm -hmm. So the same way that like, you know, because um, like people are always like getting up in arms over NFTs because it's like, it's just a JPEG. It's just a JPEG. Like, why should why is anybody buying a JPEG? And like the best way I've been trying to explain, like conceptually what makes an nft like interesting is like it's the same it's like it'd be the same thing if like you like bought a baseball signed by a famous player for like 10 quadrillion dollars and someone's like it's just the baseball it's like it's not the baseball it's like the 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 um the baseball the, being signed. The clout right yeah. it's like that that combination of the object being uh it has like 
bit of like, I don't want to say legacy, it's kind of like cringy, but just like there's there's value in it because it's become something more than just the baseball. And mm -hmm. the same way as like an NFT is a digital version of that, right? So like if like a artist mints an NFT of the picture, like anybody can view the art, but the NFT is like a collectible of it. And so that's where like its value comes from. And so in an ideal world where this wasn't immediately ruined, you could be like, if an artist opens commissions, like you could attach an NFT to each one. So you could justify jar charging more for it. Cause like the big thing that like is hard for artists to make commission is that like, why am I paying for like art? It's just a picture on my computer, right? It's the same thing people are having with, with NFTs in general. Like there's this whole like race to the bottom in the digital art market because like people have to keep pricing lower and lower and lower because nobody sees any real value in art. Mm -hmm. But like attaching it to a digital collectible, which like we have an entire generation of kids raised on Fortnite that are primed for this shit to buy things digitally, right? So like there's already kind of like an expectation in general of like like digital goods and stuff that's kind of already been normalized. So like putting it in a collectible sense, like in theory, that makes sense of being like, it's just a way of like, adding that collectible aspect from the physical world to the digital world. But the almost the advantage of that too, which is nice about NFTs, is there's something attached to them called a smart contract. So mm -hmm. if I'm the famous baseball player, right, and I sign the baseball, you know, and then okay. someone else turns around and sells it for like $5 million, they get $5 million, I get nothing, even though they're making $5 million off my image and my clout and my value as like what people see me as like a, a player that's like affected the game or whatever. With mm -hmm. an NFT, if I mint an NFT of like my art, I, I can put in this smart contract that every time it's resold, I get 20% forever. So if that person who buys my NFT and they decide to sell it for a million dollars, I get $200,000. The next person that sells it for $10 million, I get $2 million because it's all tracked on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So it's a way of like adding a, 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 a kind of like digital collectible marketplace or just increasing value by giving digital goods some, some sense of like the idea of tactility and, uh, and, and kind of, uh, the collectible aspect to art while also mm -hmm. allowing creators to kind of make residuals in perpetuity off their work uh, where even physical goods can't do that just because you can't really track them like that. So like mm -hmm. all of that interesting could be cool too bad. It was immediately ruined. And now we're just dealing with the bullshit. We are now with people like stealing people's art and selling <laughs> NFTs of it. There was like some, some girl who for famous artist that like, uh, had like a ton of like open heart surgeries, but eventually like she died from it and someone made an account on Rarible as her and started selling all of her art as NFTs, even though she's fucking dead. And it's just like, damn, oh, uh, here we go. Here we go. It didn't take long for humanity to ruin this too. Mm -hmm. And um, it sucks. Not to mention the environmental impact because Ethereum is still run on proof of work. So there's like a bajillion zillion computers that have to like, use tons of fucking energy to validate all these transactions. It sucks. They ruined another good thing. Just like Bitcoin was cool, but now it's just not being treated like a digital currency. It's just a fucking stock and nobody spends Bitcoin. They just hold it and hope it goes up in value. So the whole point is ruined. So what you're telling me is that you're a communist. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, anyway, can I share something real fast before we continue? We're already First running time. like behind. Mm -hmm. Tom, Tom, good, good rundown by the way. That explains no, a lot. Thank you for that, Tom. Um, <laughs> continue, Kalia. All right. So yeah, yeah, the Oscars. Um, I, I saw somebody mention in the in the chat that Soul um Soul. was uh <laughs> one of the one of the first ones that won another Oscar since like Up eleven years ago. Uh, nice. for a score. Yeah. Nice. It also got a sound nomination as well. Like, Soul's one of the very few, because some Pixar movies actually do get nominations outside of the main animation category. Not everyone. So, it's also, I think people in general respect Pete Docter. Um, yeah. Even if his speech was not, like, the greatest thing in the world or anything. But I think people do respect him. Um, I do think, like, even he was, like, 
um, a little like, guys, we need to stop awarding the Pixar brain trust. Like he has three animation Oscar animation feature Oscars, which is the most ever at this point. Um, and I'm sure he was like, okay, this Pixar thing's gone on long enough. Like, please, <laughs> you know, we need to give other directors beyond Brad Bird, Anderson, Pete Doctor. I guess we're not yeah. giving any more to John I'm, Lasseter, but um, I I feel like the only time that any other film can win if like if Pixar or Disney has like a really lackluster year like in 2018, where the two movies that came out there were Rick and Ralph two and uh, Incredibles two. Yeah, although yeah. I I am not the biggest fan of Incredibles two, but I think um, the support for Spider Verse was just so strong, yeah. and and Incredibles two like. And this, I'm not like making things up. Was being, uh, people were saying it would get a best picture nomination for most of that year. So, what? um, because people, yeah, no, people not in animation like that movie a lot. So, I think the problem, I think Spider Verse surprised people, and that's what really helped it because Sony later has said, like, through executives, they're like, we should have pushed this for best picture. There was just so much love for it. We didn't expect, like, no one expected that movie to be what it became. What was so, the best um, picture of 2018? Was that Green Book? Uh, it was. <laughs> it was Green Book? Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, wow. But, but yeah, like, with the with the Oscars, um, how it ended so abruptly, it feel, felt like it started abruptly, too. It was like, we have, like, um, the walk-up... Um, and then I like the I like the walk up because yeah. it was like a movie. But then yeah, it yeah, like, yeah. But then it was like, wait, this is live because it, it did look like a movie at, at that point. Yeah. Well, so so they they had a theory to shoot it like a movie and do it differently this year. Yeah. Um. And yeah. there's certain I know people who love the Oscars and sort of liked the idea of it, but didn't like the execution. Um. So it's direct. It was directed by Steven Soderbergh, who's a direct. He did like. Magic Mike and um, Out of Sight and Traffic and all that stuff. And he like direct, basically directed the Oscars. And he came up with this whole theory, like it was shot in 24 frames, not 29 point whatever, that it like video-y. Um, but I don't think it worked too well. I don't think they really thought out, like, cause like best screenplay, like are you telling me like someone in the, you know, in the middle of nowhere is like oh shit best original screenplay i'm gonna watch this for three hours yeah like, and, like they were they were talking about like the people who were nominated which i i, I thought was sweet but like i mean the people watching would be like wait are we starting like where are the movies <laughs> yeah and the, i think also the film industry um there's two things i think it really fucked up with is the oscars are made to promote and you're not showing clips and there's a lot of people if they'd seen clips of some of those movies would have seen yeah and they, they didn't really or... start showing clips of movies until like the second half well they only showed clips for the feature awards so it was like best documentary best feature you know best picture best animated feature and best international those are the only things they showed clips for yeah they, Everything they showed like was... like um uh clips without audio for some things like with, like, yeah with sound and Oh, Sword. that's true. I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. But it, it just didn't, I don't know. I think that could have been done better. And, you know, you were posting that tweet of the game awards numbers versus the Oscar numbers. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, everyone knew this was going to be the worst rated Oscars ever yeah. just because of the year we've had and they nominated kind of obscure things. But to my, I don't know the game awards, so you can correct me on this, but I think don't the game awards one nominate games that people like play. most gamers yeah. play yeah. <laughs> and, and don't they have like big trailer reveals and yeah, stuff big trailer, which they they yeah. sort of did this year for the oscars but like only for west side story yeah, it was west side story in the heights and like yeah but, but it was like the fourth trailer for in the heights so yeah, yeah. i think in the heights only did that to be like because in the heights and west side story already have like kind of a trying to one-up each other but i I wish they done. Like, I mean, like you know, it's Lin Manuel or Miranda. Like one of them's going to be better. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> I think like they should have done the Shang Chi trailer. They should have premiered the Eternals trailer. They should have like the Oscars should be more fun. And like the problem yeah. with the Oscars is like no one wants to be preached to about like I like most of the movies nominated, but I think like they need to open it up and like they need to bring Shrek back. And well, Jimmy Neutron. 
I and think the I'm going to say this like that that is for real. I I actually do think like if they had like Shrek host or something, the internet would have lost its mind. So I think like if Shrek came out <laughs> and just did like a monologue, everyone would be like, "What is happening?" And it would be like fun because you yeah, would... so you're getting so many people to watch that. There there's like so many ways they could make it. Like if they put like Endgame up for Best Picture or something, uh-huh. there's like so many ways. Or like nominate Sonic for best visual effects. Like there's they're not doing themselves any favors and right. they're they're not really respected in the cinephile critical international film community with their stupid choices anyway. So mm-hmm. they can drop the whole artistic crap yeah. because doing it and like just like be like, Hey, you wanna celebrate Hollywood? Why don't you like celebrate the Hollywood you actually are? And you can still do some indie movies and stuff, but just like, you know. Yeah, you, like I like I, I, I like what um um the Annie Awards does, where it has like a best um animated animated feature and then best animated feature independent. Yeah, that yeah. see that's a good point because they tried to do best popular. That was like very controversial when they tried to do that and they walked it back. But if they did have best independent feature and best uh, what's it, what was the other yeah, one? Yeah, just, just best feature. Just best feature, yeah, and just be like, because that would reward indie films, and you can have your best picture, and maybe one, you know, I I don't think there's a problem with that really. I and the first Oscars had a best picture and best artistic picture, so it's not out of the ordinary. But they need to lighten up because it's just like I don't I like those movies, but if I was a regular moviegoer, I'd be like, what the fuck is this bullshit like? I'll see some of these movies, but like try to like meet people halfway and also have a best stunts. Like let's have best stunts. Yeah, yeah. Like that would be so cool to see best stunts. Like I just don't I don't see what the problem is there. Right. Um all right, let's go through some trailers. Uh try to get uh through a bunch of these. Um so Godzilla Godzilla, singular point, the new anime. Godzilla. Godzilla. Todd Ziller, uh, singular point. Yeah, that, that's coming out on, on Netflix. Uh, I'm already three episodes into it because I'm watching it on Japan Netflix. Nice. Whoa. Yeah, I, I saw in the trailer they got Jet Jaguar in there. They do. Is it good? Mm. Um, Jet Jaguar. Yeah. It's. I'm it's like Earth withholding Earth. judgment because it's it's very slow so far. Like I'm three episodes in and like it's. It's really, it's good. It's int- It's very anime. It's a very anime kind of story, but it also has like kind of the slow, myth- more kind of like methodical pacing of like a Showa Godzilla movie, you know, where there's like a lot of just like people talking and like figuring oh, out yeah. what's going on. Oh, okay. Like it's been, it's been like three episodes almost exclusively of that. There's been like a couple action scenes. Godzilla still hasn't shown up yet. Episode three. Oh, episodes. Is, is it better? Than, is it better yeah. than those animated Godzilla movies? Because I didn't like those. So much. Yeah. Oh crap. Yeah. The, I I liked the first one. Okay. I give it like a six point five out of ten. I thought the second one was terrible, and I never even watched the third. Um, I think it's better than those. Like, I think I think it more has the spirit of Godzilla. There's like. I don't. I don't want to obviously spoil anything because no one's really seen it unless you're like torrenting the the Japanese releases like I am. But um, there are some monster fights in the first couple episodes with Jet Jaguar and like some other monsters. Um, there is some good action sequences. There's stuff stuff is happening. It's like a very. It's it's following the main characters who are like kind of like scientists and like engineer kind of people, but like quirky anime characters of that instead of just like mm-hmm. boring. Uh, suit and tie show up businessmen you know and they're just trying to figure out what is going on and they still haven't explained even in the show what exactly is going on yet it seems like the whole arc of the series yeah. is gonna be piecing together like what is happening with like the sudden resurgence of these creatures and like how it oddly seems aligned with some myth that was referred to in the beginning of the show um I do like it a lot so far like if you're able to sit through you know like a show of Godzilla movie and listen to like the dialogue and stuff um Hmm. You, I think you'll enjoy it. I'm liking it so far, but again, they have Godzilla still hasn't shown up yet, and that's like obviously the big selling point. So that'll yeah. make or break it for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um, I, I've been watching a lot of shows, so I think this sounds like I'm going to be into it. Yeah. Um, can I say something about the trailer though? Um, oh, sorry. God, no. God. What do you think? This is your podcast or something? You fucking. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I just wanted to say Godzilla looks goofy as fuck in that trailer. <laughs> like his face. Looks, looks so his weird. face has looked goofy in the little previews, but like the 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 key art they showed on Twitter a couple like months ago now looked really good. So that's why I'm like, is he going to look dumb or is he going to look cool? I'm very confused right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's see. Then we got a trailer for Resident Evil Darkness, which was uh, part of that Resident Evil sho showcase. Uh, the showcase. <laughs> um, and it, it's actually um, like uh, going to be a CG animated series on Netflix. Um, it's uh, taking place like a couple years after Resident Evil 4 um, where we have Leon Kennedy and, and Claire Redfield at the White House uh, and you know s stuff goes wrong um, so I'm interested in seeing it especially since it's like using characters from the game uh, in a series rather than, than you know how the, the movies are just, like completely different Right, right. Yeah, it looks much more authentic. Uh, I'm definitely interested in seeing it. It's probably the most interested I've been in Resident Evil in a while, just like in terms of not just outside of the game, like of all the, the games, other kind yeah. of related media. Um, those movies are just the best thing to come out of those Resident Evil movies is the half in the bag episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, and we got a trailer for uh, another Netflix trailer for Love, Death, and Robots uh, Volume Two, um, which I I'm glad it's getting a Volume Two because like I I liked the uh, the the first um, uh, season of it. Uh, it's an anthology series that's uh, all about like sci-fi and horror. Um, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, with with all all the, every episode being like a different animation style, uh, it, it's it's really cool. So that, I wish that... anthologies in general happen more often they're always yeah, really yeah. cool um then we got a uh a teaser for um adventure time distant lands together again uh which is interesting because a lot of people thought were thinking that wizard city would be the next one and not together again but apparently it's like they were putting out the ones i guess that they finished first um so together again that's going to be the one focusing on finn and jake uh, and that comes out next month on may 20th uh, and I'm I'm very excited to see that. Um, no, same. That looks cool. Then we got a a, a trailer for Modok, um, which looks very fun. Uh, I I I think it's it's like one of those char Marvel characters that's so weird and ridiculous that it it just it's just perfect for a comedy. Mm -hmm. Um, is that like the only one of those like when they're making that Howard the Duck? goofy ones that like survived to get to hulu mm -hmm. I, I think when they so. were doing that? yeah yeah they were doing like multiple one of them uh ones of them. I, I, i'm kind yeah. of just happy that like i think marvel's biggest issue versus dc is dc will make fun of itself which is surprising considering the snyder cut um and marvel like rarely like makes a funny teen titans go show right so i think like not that i think teen titans go is the height of comedy um <laughs> I mean, it is, but... Um, <laughs> Besides that ultimate Drake Bell bullshit. <laughs> <they try. laughs> yeah. But it, it, I, I like that Marvel's, like, taking the piss because they need to do that more, you know? They yeah. should... Yeah, and, and should this, 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 this uh, trailer actually reminds me a lot of the Harley Quinn show. Um, with, yeah, With the way it's making fun of, like, the villains and heroes. Yeah. Um, um, and then we got a... Uh, a trailer for Army of the Dead, uh, which is a Zack Snyder movie coming out on uh, Netflix. I I'm boycotting this until it's in four three. I just you know I can't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I want his full vision, and I'm not. I want the Snyder cut of this. So <sighs> hashtag full vision, full frame. You know, restore the the Army of Dead cut. That's what. I'm yeah. Saying. Um. Yeah. Then we got a, a trailer for um, Fast 9. Stoop, yeah. They're going to yeah. team up with dinosaurs in the next one. <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah, it's got to have the Jurassic World crossover. Ooh. And Transformers. Awesome. I, I don't really do think it would be awesome to just <laughs> see like Kyle would be like, fuck it, and just I'm, do it. I am wondering when two Hollywood studios are like, 
there's going to be like a Spider-Man versus meets Superman kind of thing. I feel like like that's yeah. the next thing we're going to get. Like that's the only way you can do an event film now. Oh like, yeah, dude. Shock if, people. Like, oh dude, that'd be hype. I'm surprised like, okay. they wasted Ninja Turtles Batman on I'm sure like later Viacom and Warner Brothers. I'm like, I don't know. Like people would see that though. That and that be- shit was great. It I was love good. That I didn't see that. Oh, um, dude, it was really good. It was good? so good. Like they had references okay. to like. First off, it was like it was just really good. Just watching it, like non biased like, I'm saying like non biased It was really generally good. Like I highly recommend oh. it to anyone. Yeah. Um, we got a trailer for Shang Chi and the Eleven Legend of the Ten Rings. Yes. The, the they finally got the Mandarin after. right. Yeah. I I read today. You want to hear interesting Shang Chi Shang Chi trivia? Okay. The guy who wrote Shang Chi wrote Mortal Kombat, Shang Chi, and and Spider Verse Two. Okay, so one of those is making me a bit curious. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, I don't know if that makes you feel good or not. After seeing Mortal Kombat, he he is actually. No, I right. feel okay. See oh, that? Hold on, that he, he do that hold, whole on. Uh, hold on, Jim. Jim, you were cut off a bit. I didn't hear the last part of that. Uh, oh no, uh, this guy. Um, his name is Dave. Sorry about that. Dave Callaham is he's uh he's he's uh a brown belt for jujitsu. Jujitsu. Sorry. Jujitsu. So he knows yeah. grappling. Okay. Yeah. So he he does you know, but yeah, it's interesting that he's become a major screenwriter. Hmm. Okay, well, no, that's. Uh, well, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll yeah. see. Okay, we'll see. yeah. He also helped write Ant Man. Anyway, sorry, I'm just like telling Ant Man. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, actually, he wrote Wonder Woman 1984 too. I'm oh, that, oh don't say why, <laughs> Jim. That just destroyed it. That just did. That was the kid. That uh, um, quite film. the body of work. Yeah. Yeah, so, I just found it to be interesting. I wanted to interview. So, so, um, yeah, West Side Story was another trailer, which we talked about with the Oscars, um, which is, which is weird, because, like, when, when we're talking about, like, how, you know, the Game Awards have, has a bunch of trailers and stuff, um, re- with reveals, and then Oscars is like, oh, yeah, we'll have a trailer for West Side Story, because it's a Steven Spiel- Spielberg film, film, um, but it's, like, a remake of a really well-known movie, Mm-hmm. Remakes of movies are not as hype as remakes of games, <laughs> at least now, because when you when you hear about like oh they're going to be remaking this game is like oh what are they going to change because um, some games are very old now and and it, and it's actually relatively new as far as compared to like movies and stuff. Yeah, um, I, yeah. I think the West Side Story remake. I don't really understand it because there's certain shots that look like the original and I'm like, yeah. I get he's trying to do like, oh, this is like a stage production, you know, 20 years later. I'm like, yeah, but like, why do this? And West Side Story is like fairly well known for being really well directed. So like, why? Like, I get that he's Steven Spielberg, but, you know, I yeah. just uh, I just have the worst feeling about it. I, I, I've I never liked the idea of him doing this even it, if it's, it's good it doesn't seem like it's necessary you know like right. yeah like, like what like, because like what? one thing that people are kind of hyped about right now as far as like games being remade is that the possibility that blue point might be remaking metal gear solid which if mm-hmm. you look at metal gear solid is like it looks kind of rough on the ps1 um but if they like remake playstation it... games are gorgeous i don't know what <laughs> you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you don't like Solid Snake having no animatable face and his head just jerks around as he's talking? <laughs> it's so <laughs> hard. <laughs> Big Chungus. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but but yeah, West Side Story. Yeah, you know, whatever. Um, I'm I'm more excited to see In the Heights, uh, because it's Lin Manuel Miranda. And I think that's a little more current because i think it's basically about gentrification yeah you know so i think that's a little more of the now um and then uh final trailer here which is a game trailer that came out today um ratchet and clank rift apart which looks really really good yeah yeah Yeah, it does i did not expect that you get to play as a girl so that was cool 
Uh, yeah, awesome. we, we know that the female Lombax is named Rivet now. Just another bougie game. Just another. A bougie yeah. game. <laughs> Just another bougie game for, for us. For us, Pelo, us PS5 owners. Yeah, yeah, yeah Pelo, get more. your monocle and top yeah, patch out. So that I got you. Yes. There's, there's my <laughs> controller. Yeah, here's okay. my controller, but it's a lot. Does that make me not bougie? Finally. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, look here, Mr. Cordon Blue Cheese Factory. <laughs> cheese fa not even Cheesecake Factory, but Cheese Factory. <laughs> yeah. Cheese Factory. Cheese Factory. I want the Cheese Factory. Wait, yeah, so PS5 is a status symbol now? It's just that it's so hard to get. If you have one, you're just a better person. I don't make the rules. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yeah. chuff. Damn. Well, you know, I don't, I don't have a PS5. Does that make them better than me? Unfortunately. Damn it. <laughs> I know. I gotta, I, I gotta get more Dogecoin and fix this. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, ha ha ha. Dude, this has been cursed between like GameStop, Dogecoin, and NFTs. I kind of want to kill myself. Like. <laughs> yeah. That's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, but movies. I haven't. I've made enough money with Doge, and I could buy a PS5 with it if they existed, but they mm -hmm. don't. Okay, I'm. I'm gonna try and like rapid fire through these uh, news things, and then we can uh, go, 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 head, go. head to Q and A. So, any World Showcase, mm -hmm. uh, there are some neat things there, but they showed uh, gameplay of Shredder's Revenge, uh, which looks yes! really cool. Fuck yeah! Um, uh, Cartoon Network is bringing back the Cartoon Cartoons name for a new shorts program for uh, Cartoon like, Cartoons. Pilots. Um, apparently they're developing a live-action movie of Cinderella's stepsisters with Kristen Wiig and Annie M M Mumalo. Mumalo. Mumalo? Why? I can't um, wait to ignore that entirely. Yeah, right? Um, uh, Indiana's Jones 5 is starting ca casting with, uh, Mads, uh, Mads, uh, Mickelson, um, joining. Oh, Hannibal? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh cool. I can't wait to ignore that entirely, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, Castlevania is ending with season four. That's yeah, coming out next month. Um, That's gonna be but it's going to continue with a new series in the same universe. Huh. Which, which makes not... sense because Castlevania is like, you know, you know, generations. Yeah, it is. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That um, show's been pretty solid so far, so... That show is yeah. really great. It's yeah. a really great show. Um, <laughs> the Amazon Lord of the Rings mo uh, um, show is the most expensive television uh -huh. show of all time, costing $465 million. I did some research about this, actually, and I'm a little bit surprised because I thought this would be about the Cimmerillion, which it technically kind of is, but not really, where mm. the first, second, age, third age of Lord of the Rings... The third mm -hmm. one is like mostly like Peter Jackson's like cinematic universe. Then the first stage is like the creation of Middle Earth. So the is Morgoth going to be in it, Saber? I don't think so. They okay. probably will allude to him being like, yeah, this is the Morgoth, whatever. Uh, yeah. Morgoth's little underling Sauron. But mm -hmm. there's something about like the Tolkien estate saying you can't touch the first stage. You can't touch the Cimmerillion or something like that. I don't know. Oh, that's it's interesting. Peter Jackson was supposed to be a producer, but then he's like, I'm good. Like I'll chime in with some notes and if you need some help. But he said something like, I look forward to watching one of these as a viewer and not as a creator for once. I, th no, I think I'm he just wants to make his Beatles documentary. In this yeah, right. <laughs> um, or Mortal Engines too. you know, let's get it going. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, M Mattel and Universal are developing a Rock'em Sock'em Robots movie, starring produced by by Vin Diesel. Of course, <laughs> he's like, we already is got a Rock'em Rock Sock'em Robots one? movie. It was Real Steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah there is. <laughs> yeah, the Real Steel actually had good fights, unlike the Transformers movies. It was like True. you could see everything clearly and shit. It was like good. Uh, um, uh, we 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 have some set photos for Sonic the Hedgehog two. That show not only Knuck. tails, but knuckles. 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 Knuck
But I don't trust yeah. what Jim said about the other guys. So, no. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, Joaquin Dos Santos uh, and Justin K. Thompson are the other two. Why well, could like just get the fuck? Didn't you say the people who made the Lego Movie did a good sequel to the Lego Movie, or did they not do the Lego Movie too? Um, they're they're still uh, producing the project. Oh, okay, okay. As long as they're still producing it, that's all I care about. Phil Lord and Chris Miller, even though they have the martial arts guy, are actually helping write the script also. So he yeah, might okay, just be I'll, there. And they might, he might just be defending the writer's room while they write the script. That's what I'm hoping. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. Hold the up! They're just like, do, do another kick while we uh, get the computer ready. Yeah, that's the ticket. Mm -hmm. um, Would this fight scene makes sense realistically okay go back to your coffee now thank you <laughs> <laughs> um it doesn't need to be realistic They're so spiders. uh so sony animations vivo which is you know, lin-manuel's miranda's other musical that's coming out <laughs> um it's uh heading to netflix which made se makes sense because like a lot of the sony animation stuff is going to netflix anyway um and then, uh, let's see, it, it, speaking of Sony, uh, Disney is going to be making a deal with Sony to allow Sony movies to be on Disney Plus and also on Hulu. Yeah, do you know how much that deal's worth? I don't know, how much? $3.5 billion. They Jeez. really want that Spider-Man. They did it because Netflix signed a deal with Sony for the first streaming window, and starting in 2022, they have the next streaming window. Is um, Disney Plus. So they've it, supposedly it's allegedly around three point five billion. So it could be as much as five, from what I've read. But we, mm -hmm. it seems like everyone's stopping at three point five. So yeah. Disney paid out for that. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a uh, uh, the showrunner for Falcon and Winter Soldier to write Captain America four. Okay, cool. Yeah, but they didn't say who's going to be in it. <laughs> Not that I have any doubt, but I just yeah, yeah. they specified that. Sorry. Mm. Um, and then finally, the return of the Noid Dang. from Dominus. Perhaps it was the Noid who should have avoided me. The, the <laughs> Noid, the Noid is better. <laughs> I already said this on Twitter, but I'm really upset that they brought the Noid back when the obvious partner should have been Hatsune Miku. They already did an app. It was great. They should have expanded that partnership. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. so much funnier. <laughs> but mm. yeah, like the Noid is coming back. Like there was a commercial uh, I, I saw on Twitter. Uh, Ryan linked it to me. And then, but but before I Ryan linked me that that uh, commercial, I saw a thing. It was like, oh, the Noid's going to be in that Crash Bandicoot mobile game. Why? <laughs> Why? Now we know. Because the Noid is back. Silly. The Noid is back. I. Why? Like, did, Why did, did the guy, did the, the original noid? guy who got annoyed at the Noid, um, like, did he die or something? Is that why they're bringing him back? <laughs> I, I'm just confused well, I mean, about why they're bringing him back. So I was Adam West passed away, away so that's what happened. And then he killed on family. Apparently, the Noid was dropped because, like, some Domino's employee with the last name Noid went nuts and like held up a Domino's. With a yeah, that, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like, um. Wait, is this real? Is this the truth? I say, were you lying or are you telling because, the truth? But, but the, the 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 real reason that the Noid like <laughs> stopped existing was because of like. Yeah, this, Kenneth yeah. Lamar Noid <laughs> history. You, oh, just, yeah. I'm trying not to laugh. It's not the funny. Noid history <laughs> decline. Okay. Um. Let me read it real fast here. On January 30th, 1989, <laughs> a mentally ill man who thought the ad campaign was a personal attack on himself. Okay, I'd be careful. Make sure I'm not taking being too, like... Uh, okay, let me continue. <laughs> he entered a Domino's restaurant in... Oh, my God. It's Georgia. Yep, armed Georgia. With a, <laughs> armed with a gun, held two employees hostage for over five hours. What? How is this even real? After telling the employees that Domino's owner, Tom, whatever, you, Tom, had stolen yeah. his... He forced him to call Domino's headquarters and demand a hundred thousand dollars on a white limousine as a getaway transportation. After offering to exchange one hostage for a copy of The Widow's Son, <laughs> Noid, rene he, he reneged on his offer. Uh, after a police officer brought him the book, 
Noid eventually became hungry and forced the employees to make him two special pizzas. <laughs> You're lying. Are you? No, no. I'm, I'm, there's, there's, I, I wish there was a movie about this, like kind of like oh, Dog Day Afternoon. Oh, 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 oh. get Netflix on the phone. We have oh. a new. While Noid ate the pizza with his gun and his lap, the hostages escaped. Noid surrendered to the police shortly after. After the incident, police chief Reed Miller told the reporters, "Quote: He's paranoid." Shut <laughs> up. Uh, uh, <laughs> I wish the end of it is he was like he was like before when he thought the noid was based on him it wasn't but because he acted like it he became the noid yeah yeah it, 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 yeah was. also uh, uh, Lewis in, in the chat yeah uh, Pan has talked about it in one of his videos the guy oh, he has yeah I made an internet uh, historian video wait what happened he killed himself what happened he, he he went to a mental institution and then he but then he killed himself in ninety five. So yeah, the guy, I, I don't I don't really, know why like Domino's is bringing it back when it has like anymore. such this not connotation it. to it. Though I guess uh, most people don't really know. They don't know. Well, that's they're, they're that's hoping... what I was gonna say. Everybody who remembers the Noid is like thirty or forty and can't eat pizza anymore because we're too old. What are they <laughs> thinking? <laughs> yeah, what they what they thought is the market for YouTube videos of creepy stories is gonna spike like crazy after this Dude, hits again. Or D chest. I'm 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 just upset the Noid was snubbed for an Oscar. Mm, well, Anthony Hopkins had to win. It was his year, and just... <laughs> Anthony Hopkins versus the Noid. <laughs> you, the, the Noid it's was like supposed to be the title of this episode in '92, but Anthony Hopkins won for Silence of the Lambs. So yeah, right. And the Oscar goes to the Noid. <laughs> All right, let's let's head to super chats. Um, I'm not sure like <laughs> how many. Uh, I I don't think we'll be able to get to uh, Twitter questions, unfortunately. Um, but we'll we'll, we'll try to get through these as as quickly as possible. Um, let's see. My birthday is happening next week. Give me wishes from Delhi eighteen. Happy birthday, Delhi eighteen. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Uh. Um, Brandon King says twenty fifth uh, anniversary of Dexter's Lab. Thoughts. Uh, still a great show. Great show. Yeah. Besides the last few seasons, still a great show. Um, it's my favorite growing up. Edit Man, uh, saying biggest Os Oscar snubs. People or movies that didn't get nominated for the year that you hope it would be. Uh, the Lego Movie from for twenty fourteen didn't even get nominated. Yeah, that's like really, that is... really. It's a really good. Uh, <laughs> that was a really good year for animation, but like the like, Lego Movie, like they didn't even consider it. They didn't consider Lego Batman m Movie either. Yeah, they yeah. kind of fucked up on the whole all the Lego. I don't think any. I mean, yeah, I would have no, just none, none of the Lego, Lego movies Lego. got nominated for anything. Yeah, that should have been nominated. Do the right thing. The TV Academy is thing. like biased towards Mega Bloks. Those fucks. <laughs> <laughs> or Bionicle. I mean, they did. Bionicle is Lego. They did nominate Playmobil. So <laughs> Bionicle's cooler mm. Lego. They didn't do that, did they? <laughs> I like how everyone... Oh, I'm like, did they? <laughs> I, w I won't answer that question, because it's... I'd put nothing past the Academy at this point. Um, and, and then another one from Edit Man saying, favorite spy movie? Spy Kids. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> okay, I, was gonna say, I don't know, some people like that a lot. It's just like nostalgia. Yeah. I, don't know. I haven't watched many oh. spy movies. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm just not thinking of ones that I've I've seen that like I can uh, do all the James, like James Bond's Bond or Mission Impossible. Yeah, yeah, like the James Bond is like yeah, but I what haven't, seen, I haven't seen that many James Bonds. Yeah, the Mission Impossible. Oh, yeah, Mission, Mission, Mission Impossible. Impossible. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess they would be spy movies. Yeah, what what like... was the spy this the Will Smith thing that came out? That was Birds. Birds oh, spies, spy spies in disguise. Yeah. yeah, it should have been called Bird Spy. Birds. I'm trying to think like between Tomorrow Never Dies and Casino Royale because those are my two favorites. I Casino Royale is the, the only one I saw. Really sick. I do really. You know what? Yeah. What song? I said Casino Royale was pretty it's so sick. good. Yeah. I've never seen good. a James Bond movie fully. Oh really? Yeah, really. Everyone keeps uh, telling me I should watch them. I just I, never I, I saw a couple chance. in the '90s, like over my friend's house, but I don't remember. I you remember this girl yeah. breaking this guy in half with her legs, like her hips or some shit. Like, that was the only one. I vividly remember that. Oh, um, Nathaniel Fogus says Kingsman. Yeah, Kingsman. Was oh, cool. Kingsman was oh, the first. Yeah, I, I got Kingsman's fucking lit. Yeah, I, 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 still, I still need to watch that. Oh, I need to see man. the sequel to Kingsman. I haven't um, seen the second you, one. 
Don't yeah. don't see the sequel to Kingsman. Do yourself a favor. Okay. Oh, no. Um, okay. Then. The next one from Edaman. Uh, movie or TV show trailers are making you know it was going to be bad. Also, what movie bad movie TV trailers were bad, but the movie uh, show was actually good. Oh, How to Train Your Dragon. That trailer. That first trailer. I really hated, and I love. Oh it, it, typically, typically, for me, a lot of Pixar trailers aren't very good, but the movies are usually always good. You know what? Kung Fu Panda. I was like, this is going to be a stupid, stupid movie about a stupid, dumb panda yeah. who's going to be like an idiot. I was like, never mind, this movie's God. Like, oh, like, the first, another another one, one, like uh, Cloudy the Chance of Meatballs. I was like, that looks stupid. And then I watched it. I was yeah. like, this this is great. I think most most studios animation studios make bad trailers yeah. especially in the 2000s you yeah do well, like like they, they make those trailer. trailers to appeal to five-year-olds the yeah. current demographic well, of these they're movies. for the target demographic <laughs> Wait, was, was the opposite asked as well like what yeah, movie yeah. trailers look good and then were bad uh frozen oh. too <laughs> whoa or wow. green lantern no wait the ultimate one suicide squad oh, oh yeah. yeah suicide squad um from Malik Webster, uh, I never got to ask Tom when it was airing, but uh, uh, how about that uh, X arm? Uh, if you haven't seen or heard of it, I saw how you suggest you do. X arm. X arm. Isn't X arm? arm? From... X arm is like that really badly animated Crunchyroll anime, isn't it? I, do I remember not know. someone in my Patreon ta- chat was talking about it, and they said you need to watch it because it's terrible. Um, let me look it up. Make sure I know. I'm talking X about the right arm. Thing. It was like a hybrid. CG two oh, like anime. Ruby? No, it was. God, it's hard to describe. There's like two D characters, um, but the the main characters are all three D. But they literally have no rig in their face, so they don't ever like change expressions. Their mouths barely move in like a really weird way. Like all the scenes looked like janky as fuck, and it was like really terrible. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was X Arm. It was like a, one of the Crunchyroll original things. It's based on a manga from like or a story from back in the day. But uh, yeah, that was making the rounds a few months ago for being the worst thing of all time. Um, I didn't watch it. Maybe I will because um, bad 3D makes me sad. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, next from uh, Enigma Prince. So Tom, here asked me to say this question for like six days weeks, but please enlighten us on the wonders and intri- intricate newish uh, fad of artistic endeavors of and in- in- MFTs and her grandstands of the whole whole boy- voyage. Tom did a whole rant on that uh, earlier, um, and I, 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 I saw Enigma like, Prince in the chat actually saying like, "No, I super chat," because <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Well, but you, you, you got, got your super answer. super chat answered. <laughs> yeah. In in incredible detail, I call that a yeah. deal actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, from, well, thank you for coming to my TED talk. From Zane Powers. Uh, so if Jack's Blade is Jax, is Saber actually Saber Wolf? You know, you want know a funny thing. Uh, so like the guy who played Jax in fucking um, the Annihilation movie, the the actor played Jax. He was like one of those wrestlers on um, that show American Gladiators, and his name was Saber. So it's just it's funny. So I just thought it was funny. Oh. Yeah. So there oh, you go. Saber was a Jax. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, Ed Man saying thoughts on games, movies, and shows trying to appeal to a wider audience. People are saying that about the new Mortal Kombat and uh, the Mulan 2020 movie. Well, I mean, like, isn't that what the studios want to appeal yeah. to a yeah. wider audience? Because like they make money. <laughs> yeah, from everywhere. I, I but just it's it's interesting. Uh, he mentions games too, because I I was reading a thread uh uh, earlier this week about triple a games and how a lot of triple a games uh in in studios they kind of (laughs) sometimes the game doesn't feel like it knows what it wants to be where it wants it wants to be open world it wants to be have a crafting system it wants to have platforming it wants to have shooting it has one it wants to have all these elements into one game it's like which one are you um what kind of game are you 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 don't you don't have you have like an identity problem um Tom, would you agree that that's kind of a, a thing like playing AAA games? Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of um, just like spe- especially like different... with like uh, different like EA and Ubisoft and Activision. Games oh yeah, and like that. I mean, I yeah. mean, they're they're all just trying to to take the most kind of like 
time and money consuming aspects of games and cramming them together into a Skinner box that will just like suck up all your time, energy and money. And yeah. um, I don't know. It feels like for a lot of these companies, genre doesn't really exist uh, that, anymore. That's, that's again, why. That's why I, I was so disappointed with what they did with Avengers. That what what a waste of like, uh, oh, like absolutely. What a waste of a, a of a an IP, like. Yeah, I mean, you have to fuck up really bad to like make Avengers flop, but um, right. <laughs> they did. Yeah. I mean, I I take personal offense at Avengers because they canceled Deus Ex three for that. They took the entire. Ubisoft Montreal team off of making the the sequel to Deus Ex Mankind Divided so they could make environments for that shit show. And then Deus Ex Mankind Divided went on to sell more than Avengers in the same time period, even though it is an old game. So, um, fuck you, Square. Yeah. Uh, Edit Man saying, best villains in any media genre. Uh, fun, menacing, etc. Um, uh, Mojo Jojo uh, from Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> Aku yeah, from Samurai Jack. Jack. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Ah, cool. Yeah, uh, Ryan's this. Oh, cool. Maybe like the Joker from uh, all the things. <laughs> Besides <No>. Suicide Squad <laughs> and Snyder Cut. That's his best role. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'll get you and look like an accident. <laughs> I mean, like. Yeah, what a boring but very true answer is Thanos. Like, what a yeah. outstandingly written villain. Besides, in the cartoon where he's like, "I will have you." Mean and they're fucking they're yeah. not movies. <laughs> I um, want a bonus skeleton, literally. Uh, and, and another one from Edman here it says, "We are at uh, 141 episodes, or 142, because I uh, forgot to change the number." Uh, so far in POS Podcast, so wh- what are you guys uh, in chat's uh, favorite POS Podcast episodes or moments you remember? Oh, wow. Remember when Saber got, like, pissed off drunk, and it was, like, so bad that he, like, kept saying stuff? That oh, he yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was a great one. I was like, Saber, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, Saber, we're trying to save you. I'm saying something. <laughs> See, my favorite's still the forest porn one. That's yeah, like... That was, that was, like, episode 14. Uh, not... 14, 15. Is um, that still up? Did you yeah, take yeah. that down or something? Yeah, it's, it, still it's, up? It, it's, still, it's still in the playlist. I just uh, unl- like... unlisted it on the channel, so it's more neat. Uh, okay, yeah, the the forest porn early on, that one, where we, we did like a 20-minute discussion on who leaves porn in the forest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a legendary conversation. Yeah. Yeah, if you've, you, if you've been with us since uh, 2015, when that episode aired. <laughs> That you that was like say that 2015. It hasn't been that long. That yeah, that was tri- yeah. Triple Threat, triple threat pizza, pizza was around. That was also too. an early episode. Damn, yeah, y'all, we, y'all yeah. been with us for a long time. <laughs> yeah, we've been we've been doing the yeah. Those early ones were cool. I like the, you know, um, but, back when we were all young and full of energy. Yeah, we were. We were well, like, we only really were young anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Not even really that. We uh, just, when we thought the world couldn't get any worse. Uh, <laughs> Oh, why'd you have to t- remind me of that? <laughs> Just go back to thinking about uh, triple threat pizza. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, I think my friends uh, saying, "Yo, Jax, uh, why your shrimpy self got pawned in uh, in uh, got pwned in by Sub Sub Zero in that movie? Oh, uh, better get pumping in it more in the gym, scrub boy." Um, what? In- what? Did you just call me pwned? Cancelled. Cancelled. Mm. Did it end in a Y or an I? How offended should I Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How offended should I be? I. <laughs> All right, you're lucky this time. That'd be really funny if there was like... <laughs> never mind, never mind. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Like uh, some white guy at a bar walking up to a black guy. Listen here, boy. Okay, Uncle Ruckus, how bad you want your ass? Well, <laughs> yeah. other black guys are putting in like, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm getting in a friendly way. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Z- Zane Powers uh, saying Goro, uh, Kintaro, or Motaro. Goro, Goro. He's the OG. Kintaro is cool, but he's just a furry Goro, and Motaro is only cool when he has his hind legs. But they took him away in fucking. Uh, Armageddon because blah blah blah, but <clears throat> how much? Um, 
So uh, another one from Metaman. Uh, Jackson, everyone else, uh, best and worst Mortal Kombat games. For worst, I always heard that 4, X, Deception, and Armageddon are the worst ones, excluding spinoffs. Well, yeah, I played every Mortal Kombat game, so it's that fucking um, Special Forces. Mortal Kombat Special Forces is the fucking worst. Um, then Mortal Kombat. I mean, honestly, MK1, MK2, MK3, like, if you're talking about, like, story, that varies. Because, like, the game's always improving gameplay and stuff like that. Like, honestly, my personal favorite Mortal Kombat game is still Shaolin Monks for PS2, where you got to be, like, either Liu Kang or Kung Lao, or you could be freaking Sub-Zero or Scorpion. And that shit was just fun as fuck, because, like, you could, like, alternate, and then, like, it was like a beat em up and you could play with friends and stuff like that. Um, Armageddon was only bad because, like, even though it had, like, a lot of characters, it was like a lot of characters got nerfed. It was like, oh, I'm playing with fucking Goro, I expect to be fighting, like, a final boss, and it's just like, yeah no and it's just like oh i'm playing with fucking onaga the final boss from here it's like yeah no it's like i guess that's what they have to do in video games except in dragon ball z fighters where super saiyan 4 gogeta is just the godliest character ever because that way he is and everyone should fucking deal with it so yeah it was uh it's good it's good um uh then another one from edaman saying uh movies that do product pl placement right and uh movies that do it badly well you know wayne's world i used to think did it right but now i've had to watch their ad for uber eats is everywhere in new york city so i actually regret ever thinking that was a funny thing because you, you know like, you know what's a good product placement fucking lego movie true because <laughs> you know what i bought so many beach clothes after i watched that you know what no never mind it's not i was gonna say one of the product placement that makes me just go you know i want that shit like, like i i want that right now but then like the movies yeah. like for instance, you, you know movies that do it badly fucking sub a lot of sony movies do it badly because like who who the fuck uses a sony vio laptop nobody <laughs> mm. yeah or You're like me that you yeah. didn't want to buy everything from jack and jill <laughs> i actually remember when apple did that with the first mission impossible and people would talk about how weird it was that that was starting to happen in movies. And I was like, wow, that feels so old now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Especially you look at that computer and he's like, like, hold on, let me load this JPEG. And they just stare at the computer for five minutes while it goes. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> God. <laughs> um, Zane Powers, uh, can one successfully make a series without selling it to a network, uh, rather strike it out independently? Um, well, Saber was looking at that earlier today <laughs> to see if that could happen. Wait, do what now? Say, uh, Zane Powers asking, can one successfully make a series without selling it to a network, rather strike it out independently? And I was saying, oh, yeah. <laughs> you were looking at that earlier today with that weird Tuttle Twins thing. No, you can do it. Yeah, I mean, like has been, uh, uh, has been hotel. I mean, they they have a uh, a thing with um a twenty four now, but they're doing hell of a boss, uh, Vizby, Vizby Pop but, on YouTube. But if you have enough, I mean, the thing is with Vizzy Pop is she has a crew and enough money. The money is the issue, it's yeah. not the yeah. It, it, it's like, it's really the money, not the network thing. Yeah, yeah. which I mean, I'm sure. Sorry. Of... Sure. I was just gonna say, there's lots of like small animated series on YouTube. You know, yeah. Like it's just that's not the most marketable thing, unfortunately. Yeah, like um, uh, um, cyanide and happiness has like their shorts going on 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 YouTube. Mm -hmm. Well, in a program, in a, in a algorithm that favors lots of content, animation has to compromise in order to get that out. Either you have right. a massive like Viv has, because I'm sure Viv ever was like, listen, uh, if y'all want more hell of a boss, we gotta do a Kickstarter. I'm sure she make millions because of that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but um. I don't know, but currently funding that maybe merch. I don't know. She's she's obviously doing something right and is working tremendously. AdSense must be doing fine with the fucking numbers those episodes. She must be though. making at least twelve, thirteen dollars per video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean that's all an animator needs for ramen noodles, anyway. Like, she's got those that YouTube for coat money that the guy YouTube for coat, coat money. money. <laughs> <laughs> I forget when I talk about this with Saber, but I think it's like that person who does the how to tie a tie video, like has like a fur coat and a limo, and Saber was like, Jim, uh, I don't think you know how AdSense works. Uh, <laughs> YouTube fur coat, well, that's good, that's good. The, um, uh, that Tuttle Twin thing, like just to let folks know, there's this, uh, you know what, I, nah, you're running late, never mind, go ahead, Paley, do your thing. Um, Let's see, from Malik Webster, uh, favorite original song for a mediocre movie. 
uh, bring it, uh, bring it from Snakes on a Plane slaps way hard, harder than it needs to. Hmm. Original song from a mediocre movie. Uh, I mean, you could just go with Space Jam for fuck's sake, because yeah. Space Jam is the easy answer. Yeah. yeah. Space Jam is a classic. It's a masterpiece. Yeah. I, I'm offended that you would even oh. suggest. <laughs> oh, what about that? Uh, the, the Obama Snow movie? Obama Snow is a Pokemon, isn't it? Um, yeah, the, it's Obama, good. The, the Abominable movie that you watched with Zendaya. <laughs> no, are, 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 you, are you talking about uh, Smallfoot? Yeah. Yeah, sm a small foot. I mean, I I liked small foot. Um, I, oh, I, 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 I was... yeah, okay. I I I I think other people would probably call it mediocre, but I I liked it. I liked the the message in it. Um, uh, wait, so what question? Uh, favorite original song from a mediocre movie? Oh, probably. Uh, probably. Oh. Um, oh gosh. You like Kiss from a Rose from Batman Returns? Or any of the songs from the Milo Pony movie? Did you know the way it yeah. goes? That's a good answer. Mediocre. How dare you? X. Mediocre. That, movie is, that movie's fine. It's it's a fine movie. I would call it a mediocre though. I would call it like this. It, it, um, I, I would I would I would say okay. It's a it's perfectly serviceable six point five out of ten. Are they, are they not synonymous? Doesn't mediocre just mean average? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Mediocre feels more. Like, mediocre yeah, feels like you're putting it out right like, yeah. Like, like, yeah, like you're spending like, 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 too long on IGN, Paleo. Sure, it, <laughs> might feel that, it might feel that way, but like the definition is, is average, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah but, but, but like <laughs> fucking Mad Max has like changed my view of that word. Like mediocre. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> mediocre. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, uh, Austin uh, asking, "Where's this hashtag? Where's Saddle Rash review, Jackson Jim?" Yeah, Jim, we still need to do that. Yeah, we do need to do yeah, that. Yeah, we need to do that. The biggest thing's gonna die with we need to do that. Two I years think, now. We need. I think that. the problem is, is we projected. You actually, Jax, projected the Saddle Rash fandom would take over, and then COVID hit. Yeah, so, COVID they didn't want it. It was too powerful. That's what yeah, happened. So I mean, like at next Momocon, we know what we gotta do. I think there's video of you in that saying like like this this showroom is gonna be filled with saddle rash fans. 50 <laughs> episodes straight to series. <laughs> <laughs> uh um yep. uh, from uh, yeah, we have to review saddle rash. Yeah, from, yeah. from Edit Man here. Uh, outside of Tifa and other uh Final Fantasy VII girls. Uh, uh, who are, uh, who else are the sexiest girls in fa the Final Fantasy series? Uh, me is, it's Yuna, Riku, and Pain from Final Fantasy X-2. Um, Quistus Trap. Easy. Done. Who? Quistus from Final Fantasy VIII. Um, oh, I've boy. only played up to seven, uh, so other than the girls from seven, <laughs> I, I would, I would say, uh, Terra from... Terra, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> Terra from Final Fantasy VI. Riku in Ten Two is pretty pretty good looking um what was that i didn't i only played like the first hour but like that girl you meet up with in the beginning of final fantasy 15 she was pretty cute i don't know oh yeah, oh, the yeah. devil may cry girl <laughs> yeah basically not, devil may cry not nico like nicer nico wait, 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 wait. <laughs> cindy is that her name yeah yes yeah, sydney it was um, Sydney, right? Because it was supposed to. She was. It was like Sid, but Sydney. No, like no. It was actually Sid. Sid. Uh, it was actually Cindy, I think, because like people were really? calling her Sydney, but it was like it's actually Sin Cindy. Uh, they missed see. the opportunity there. I, I know the a, a very missed opportunity because like they, they it, she wasn't Sid. Sid comes out the be, behind her. <laughs> um. But yeah, yeah. C Cindy uh, Aurum. Yeah. Um, um that's that's my answer i'm just thinking about more final fantasy because i'm like i don't know not really uh, questus just questus um zane powers uh, did any of you ever watch anameme no yeah, oh made. is that I've the rap battle made. people because they had like mm. they had the fucking rap battles between like um old spice guy and the most interesting man in the world and then they had the fucking like insanity wolf versus like courage wolf or something i used to watch those fucking rap battle things they did all the time yeah those are things talking about because the quentin reviews video came and out and meme um well i don't know what the quentin reviews are um let's see uh edit man edit man saying uh i wish i mentioned uh lulu from final fantasy 10 the, the cleavage um 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Zane Powers, uh, are Marvel films military propaganda? I think so. No, they, they, they do have involvement with the U.S. military. I don't think they're straight propaganda, but they definitely get things okayed by the military, so it's up to debate, but I don't, I don't think they are mostly, you know. Um, Dane Powers asking, can Jar Jar restore the integrity of the award, the award show? Never. No, Jar Jar could. He should have, he should have, uh, he should have hosted. He's the key to all uh, of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Zane Powers uh, asking if Green Book uh, winning solved racism, what did Anthony Hopkins winning solve? NFTs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's like, yeah, yeah, that was another thing. It's like they were supposed to like it, it, everybody wanted uh, Chadwick Boseman to win for a posthumous award, and it, I forgot to mention the in memoriam where the in memoriam was like two minutes and like very very fast. Well, a lot of people died. There was this yeah. virus, so. Yeah. They should have just had a whole separate event for the in memoriam. <laughs> yeah, for real. The Oscars um, funeral service. Uh, uh, Toon Jay asking, aside from Shrek, which fictional character, animated or live action, should host the Oscars? Uh, think, I think Iago and Zazu should co-host. I'm going to go with Tupac Hologram. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be fun if Hatsune Miku hosted the Oscars? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. That would be hilarious. <laughs> no, we gotta get the Noid now. Oh, God. The Hatsune Noid Miku to... and the Noid together. <laughs> what, a, what a collab. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one degree of separation between them. Domino's Pizza. <laughs> um. Mm -hmm. hmm. Uh, Zane Powers saying thoughts on the argument uh, to only remake bad movies. Agreed. Yeah. Works uh, making better. For the most part, yeah, I think so. I mean, there's yeah, really... I mean, yeah. Unless you're gonna like, reboot or like do something, okay? Because like remake bad movies, I agree with that completely. And then like it's if we're just talking about movies, I'm trying to think of like if there's any movie re. Well, okay, because like. Uh, there are certain movies that like are great movies in the original. I go, oh, that's the great original movie. But then like they have a remake reboot, and I'm like, oh, I like that a lot because they took the concepts of the original. It wasn't just like a straight up retread. They were like, we're gonna add some stuff in, and they pretty much did like the Ducktales thing of like, let's take and modify and then add something distinctly our own. So I like when they do that for certain things, but I can see why it could be annoying. Cause like, for instance, a movie I don't want them to touch, even though I know they're probably going to touch it is, um, a little shop of horrors because to I me, it would be just, yeah, exactly. See, yeah. like they're making that with all this CGI shit. And it's just yeah. like that puppet still holds up that puppet from the eighties, like fucking 40 years ago, still holds up tremendous. But, but I will say, cause that, is a remake itself yeah exactly yeah. a remake itself a great re that's what i was about to go on to because like you oh, know the sorry. thing is a remake too the thing True. is yeah. and then uh freaking the fly the 80s fly with jeff goldblum remake i love that movie yeah, yeah. those are all good um uh ryan walterson uh saying since today marks uh the 30th anniversary of dinosaurs uh what's your favorite episode uh at the top of your head uh, it's every anniversary ever. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure dinosaurs have been around for more than 30 years. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, oh. Wait, yeah. did dinosaurs come out really? in 2000? No, Dinosaurs, no, the Jim Henson show from the 90s. Oh. Well, I thought those were extreme, though. <laughs> I actually watched the lettuce episode sort of recently where the son is a vegetarian. And oh, yeah. Yeah. That one's pretty funny. That one's good. It it that show holds up pretty well. It, it, it does. Recently, I've yeah. never seen uh, that show in my life. Hey Saber, like, Saber, it... hear me out. What ruined dinosaurs? <laughs> An asteroid. An astro yeah. <laughs> oh, short video. <laughs> but, but has, Saber, have y'all noticed that? <laughs> say, noticed? Say, Saber, would you, would you would you say that you enjoy dinosaurs more than the Muppet Show? Uh, I mean, I've only watched one episode of the Muppet Show, so yes. Wait, could you? I've heard, <laughs> I've heard about you. You didn't like the Muppet Show, but could you just watch the one with Luke Skywalker in it? I feel like you'd like that one. 
I'll, I'll, I'll keep watching it. Just that, like, the Muppets to me, for the Muppet Show. Whatever. I, I don't want to make Wyatt well, Walsh. No, <laughs> I'll just I'll just say for anyone who hasn't, <laughs> who isn't into the Muppets, go through the list and find a famous person that you want to see on it. Don't start with the first one because I think it's a better way to get into it. So, like the Star Wars one is a good entry point, I would say. Okay. That's, All right. Um, yeah. Uh, and also from Ryan says, uh, "Here's why Spies of Disguise." Is a good title. The spy is in disguise as a bird. Birds fly in disguise. Spies in disguise. Spies in disguise. Boom. That is good. That is good. Um. Uh. John. John Dex. Uh. Asking favorite episode of Dexter's Lab from each of you. Um. My favorite is the episode where both uh Dexter and Dee Dee become kaiju, and fight each other. Oh, that's funny. We had this question when I streamed earlier, and Izzy said that. I would say um, the pilot, because I really like that one a lot, actually. Though, it's weird, because I don't even like Mac all that much, but the Go Dexter Family Go! Yes! That yeah. episode, That's oh, my favorite so episode, by it's far. So <laughs> same, same. There's a couple of, the, the show's got some diamonds in there, with like, wow, like, I like the episode where, um, we're, it's not even Dexter's life exactly, but when like, the Justice friends, when Crunk went to the world with the uh, Peppa Pal friends, and he wanted to be part of like their show, and like he actually came up with a good pun, and the pup, one of the pups like freaked out on him, and they got into a fight. I don't know why. It just cracks me up. I, I was talking to Laura about how I, th- I think Dexter's Lab actually launched what Cartoon Network eventually became. I mean, I know it was the first yeah, of the Cartoon yeah. Cartoon. But I mean, like, just the tone it set was, like, fun. It felt different from, like, Nickelodeon and previous stuff. It had a lot more energy and sass to it. And it was, like, not dumbing it down for kids. And it set a bar. It really did set a bar when it came out. And fucking love it. Until the show got weird. But whatever. Yeah. Um, Malik Webster says, Jax, did you ever check out the uh, King Ghidorah album from uh, MF Doom? No, I didn't get a chance to, sadly. Um, there you go. Nathaniel Foga asking, Jax, are you Jake from State Farm? <laughs> yeah, I'm dating Flo, too. She's a really nice woman. Oh. Yeah, from Progressive. All right, and we got a couple more here from uh, Ryan. says, uh, for Sony, what does it mean that uh, the Smurfs promotes uh, Google and Amazing Spider-Man pr- pr- promotes Bing? Huh? What? I mean, if you search Bing, you'll find the answer. Amazing Spider. Oh, yeah, I know he's talking about the fucking scene in Amazing Spider Man where he's like oh, searching yeah. on Bing how to oh, find right, it. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. This is stupid. Uh, Microsoft and, paid a lot of money for that. And then, yeah. then the final super chat here uh, from Zane Powers uh, Do we live in a society? Unfortunately. Bro, we've always what? lived in a society. I'm, I'm here to blame the beasts instead. This is literally only for Tom. Yep, yep, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, those are all the super chat questions. Unfortunately, we'll we'll be able to get to Twitter questions because we're already running long. Um, but uh, thank you, Jim, you for coming out to uh, this oh, podcast. Thank you for having me again. Sorry, I was so late. No, uh, it's it's fine. Uh. Next podcast will be in May, and that will be on the 10th. So May 10th for our next podcast. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out. Uh, we'll see you again uh, like next month. Bye, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.